friends, and welcome back to Noclip's Game of the Year extravaganza. We're back. Mm-hmm. It's episode three of four. Uh, it's been about a week since we recorded one of these. We do them in chunks. Um, and in that week, I have uh, gotten RSV, the uh, the hottest new virus that all the kids are sharing in their schools and passing on to their parents. And uh, so if I sound a little bit like Barry White, I apologize um, but I'm delighted to be joined by uh, three gentlemen who have hopefully got um, healthier windpipes than I. Jesse Garasha, Jeremy Jane, and Frank Howley. Jesse Garasha, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Uh, uh, what's oh, you've got, We've got some games to talk about today. How you, how, are you excited about the lineup? Yeah, I can't wait to talk about these games. I think uh, they are four of the 11 of the best games that we decided on this year. Uh, and and they're all really good and different. I do want to mention before we get into things, because I can't just do a comment. I need to make sure it's in the podcast. Go for it. Uh, Final Fantasy 16. Correction on what I said. Okay. That game is not uh, designed by the combat director from the original Devil May Cry. It was oh. a combat director who worked on Devil May Cry 4 and 5. Oh, okay. So there you go. just want to make sure that it's in the record that... Uh, the game that I love, I'm not wrong about. I only made a mistake. Nobody can ever say, <laughs> criticize us for not having journalistic integrity. We will go back. We try. It is still the best AMV of 2023, it, though. So amen. Deservedly. There's no, there's no getting around that. Uh, Jeremy Jane, how are you doing, my friend? I saw you yesterday in Meat Space. It was nice. I did, yeah. It was uh, it was wonderful to see you. I kept my distance because, you, uh, as you described, <laughs> your, your, <laughs> Danny said his windpipe was closed, and I was like, all right, I'm, yeah. I'm fucking putting the gloves on for this. You don't uh, want to go that. in your garage. <laughs> yeah, I don't want none of that. Especially, I did the, you come out you know, in a hazmat suit? And you're like all bubbled up, ready to go. <laughs> you came out in like an astronaut suit. Yeah, dude, like <laughs> in the uh, <laughs> naked gun condom suit. Do you remember that? Yes. Where they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, safe uh, sex. So yeah, I, I put a condom stuff. on every limb and one on the head, and uh, <laughs> and I was good to go. Lubed up, baby. Don't drop that. Uh, <laughs> right, S- marking this one as dirty. XD card Luckily. or whatever. Explicit. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Frank Howley. Sorry, let me try that again. Frank Howley. How you doing, my buddy? I think I'm also sick. Oh, um, no. So, yeah, it's been, it's weird. But it's also like a sign, like, you know, uh, my mom and I, like, every day just going to my dad's house. But we're also inhaling so much dust and, like, oh, yeah. Not drinking as much water, not eating as much. We're trying to eat when we can, but like now it's recognizing like, oh, we gotta like slow down, take care of ourselves too. So it's it's been it's been crazy. But like I also did want to say like I had you know uh, we we as the time we're recording this, we kind of just put up our our part two game of the year episode, and we, I got I woke up to so many messages from the no clip community. Like I really didn't realize how many people listened or or, or tuned in, and I'm very blown away by all the love and wave of support so yeah, i feel like it's like the second or third push in the sales i needed because like mm. the previous two days where i think where i was at my lowest in this whole event um so i just want to say thank you everyone here and like even this morning i woke up just like so i was sick also so just kind of wanting to stay in bed but as soon as i popped in our call here and hear everyone laugh i'm like oh yeah like i feel i feel better being with people and and i think that's the other thing too during grieving process just like it's healthy to be out in the world surrounded by humanity and just reminders that like life still goes on. Yeah. Um, so, so I am doing okay. Um, and, um, but even on the list today, like bomb rush, cyberpunk, oh, the, the positive vibes of that <laughs> makes me feel good. So I'm doing all right. And thank you again to everyone here, Jesse, Jeremy, Danny, and the no clip community as a whole. And, uh, and everyone, everyone out there who's still alive. So thank you guys for, for being in the fight of humanity. Cause what a crazy existence it is. Anyways. Exactly. Right. Sometimes it's hard to just get up in the morning. Uh, thank yeah. you dude for being <laughs> here. Obviously you don't need, you know, if you need to take the time, well, you, you obviously can, but we really appreciate you being here and we'd miss you if you weren't. So, uh, really nice um, videos and stuff being posted by uh, a lot of. Uh, I didn't know your dad appeared on so many Mega Sixty Four things. Rocco put out some video. Mm-hmm. Mega Sixty Four's official Twitter account put out some videos of him doing some like clutch, like last second replacement for weatherman or pres- news presenter stuff. Uh, that was that was really cool to see. Um, the guy was not afraid to jump in front of camera as well. It turns out. Yeah, no, he was he was very like bold, confident, and uh, no, I mean that's been the crazy thing going through my dad's uh, house and just uncovering like the six different like eras he had, like seeing all his military stuff. He had a whole cowboy phase out here in California in the seventies and eighties, like <laughs> oh, man. so much, so much stuff. Um, it's good so, thing he went that yeah. way. He went cowboy, not like 
you know, uh, cult or, you know, there was a couple no, no. in the seventies yeah. in Southern California, yes, yeah. there was a couple of different buckets. Oh, you could end oh up totally. Like, no, he did he, he, at that point. Yeah. It was, he, 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 he had like a pretty strong mustache, but he didn't, he, he didn't go in the hippie direction. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been wild and fun. Um, so yeah. And again, like that's, and like, I feel like I've seen, it's also, I didn't get too deep into homebody, but like, it reminds me of stuff mm. like Alan Wake or even gone home or, or talking about my dad where it's like, Part of it is I'm piecing together clues, like finding like Resident Evil, finding notes. Like, what does this note mean? What's the combination? Not really, but like, it's just so weird, like doing that in real life, like scrap putting together notes after something's happened. And like, like very Resident Evil, I found like the last medical report from the time my dad went to the doctor right. and I saw like all the conditions and ailments. And it's like, oh, I didn't know he had this, 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 this. And like, it sucks, but it's also like, it's like fit, fitting pieces in a puzzle. And it's like, okay, so which is kind of allowing my mom and I to rest a little bit better knowing kind of what happened and stuff. Right. But yeah, uh, it's, uh, you know, I saw a lot of no, uh, notepads with zero four five one written on there. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah. He's got to come up with better passwords. <laughs> zero four five one to ice Jeez. skate uphill is the, is the next adventure for our friends at Arcane Leon. Um, fucking just, <laughs> Isn't it weird that they both ended up working on vampire games and they yeah, both boy. arcane studios and they could not be different? Like, yeah. hopefully, yeah. only one of them's bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I feel so bad for Arcane, um, Austin, and Redfall. It was, yeah, yeah. I'm excited for whatever they're working on next. Um, give them a new lease of life. Um, uh, we're here to talk about four fantastic games: Homebody, Blasphemous Two. Bomb Rush, Cyberfunk, and Dave the Diver. But before we do that, I want to remind everyone of all the games that have won uh, in No Clips Game of the Year of uh, Squozen into the top 10 plus one that we put together. Um, uh, coming up in the next episode, we'll be talking about Baldur's Gate 3, Alan Wake 2, and Midnight Suns, which technically came out in December of 2022, um, but too late to um, get any, uh, uh, you know, into any Game of the Year stuff. And it's a great little game. I played a lot of that game this week, Jesse. Nice. Your, your your words of wisdom echoing in my head. The big question we had when we talked about this last year was whether or not I would be able to get over the Marvel shit and enjoy the game. And I'll tell you, it's, it is a struggle, but the game is yeah. good, so good that yeah. that I am putting up with it and skipping every cutscene, basically. Nice. I, man. I don't want to get into it because we're saving it for the next episode, but <laughs> but same. I, I hate Marvel so much, and it's still a really good game. Yeah, there's a sort of Kirkland signature Marvel vibe going on with this game that I need to not be involved in and just play the fun action stuff, which is very good. Um, anyway, we'll talk about all that next week. Um, and then uh, what we talked about in episode one, or sorry, episode two, rather, our first of these three uh, sort of award-giving episodes was Slayer's X, which received the Zane Lofton Lifetime Achievement <laughs> Award. <laughs> stuff final fantasy 16 which won best amv resident evil 4 which won master of remaking absolutely just three banger awards there i yep. think and then typecast which we put in a sort of a temporary one of Ma uh, Mav is it Ma mavis beacon or Mav mavis. mavis mavis right mavis beacon teaches shooting um uh, i've heard that there are some suggestions from the noclip community and also jeremy Woke up in a fit of sweat last night with uh, a good idea as well, I believe. Um, Jeremy, you go first. What was the one that you came up with? Okay. I wrote down a few things here, just a few notes. Um, okay. I, I'm going to save the best one for last because I feel like the best one doesn't really capture... The best one is the best, like, joke title, but it, I feel like it doesn't really capture what's good about the game, but okay. uh, I'll save it for the last anyway. So... Uh, I thought keyboard warrior was funny because that's like people on the internet who are like arguing on the internet, yeah. something about keyboard warrior. It's not quite there, but yeah. it's maybe a, a germ of something there. Um, uh, someone, I, I will save submissions for the end. Uh, something about, I feel like it needs to include something about either uh, arcades or how frenetic it is. That's like what I've okay. been struggling to capture. Um, but the, uh, and then the other the kind of like germ before I reveal my title is uh Something about like the unique control scheme, the fact that it turns your keyboard into a controller. I was trying to think of like a way to express verbally that it turns your keyboard or your like desk area or your gaming setup into an arcade is what I was struggling okay. to capture. But the the punny title that I came up with is please hold your applause, Typer Elite. Like sniper elite. Type 
Oh, oh type. Like there we go. Really. There we go. Oh, type. Okay. Really. It didn't land as hard. I was expecting your applause, and we're all just, just like, like, you want to uh, carry me out on your on your <laughs> sorry, shoulders? Sorry, dude. But- no, it's all I good. mean, no, that was that was. It's not bad. I like. Right? I it's like this. It's, it's not bad. It's it's uh, yeah. It's but I hear it's sniper league because it's a it's an arcade game. Yeah. 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 But yeah. All right, Jesse. What do you what did you get? Uh, no yeah, bad ideas and brainstorming, there's, folks. Oh, I, I got a good no. I came up with there's nothing, a couple so. in the YouTube comments. Uh, thank you, by the way, to everyone who uh, submitted great ideas for award names. Uh, one of them that really caught my eye, and I thought was I was like pretty that's pretty good uh comes from crake pipe 13 <laughs> nice okay uh, which uh, if you offers got well don't right <laughs> i love a, love a little crake in the morning uh best arcade love letter and i think the arcade love letter award is kind of good it goes in the arcade thing and it's love letter oh it's the like letter. it's a love letter, letter. But letter because typecast letter. right so it's kind of punny okay. it's got the okay. arcade in there it's like that's pretty good i think i like the at least the seed of that idea Love letter. Yeah, love letter. Was that was there any other ones from the comments? Uh there was a lot of good ones for Final Fantasy sixteen, but uh <laughs> <laughs> better than best AMV. I don't even want to. It's not topping that though. No, it's not. Frank, you just piped up and you said you enthusiastic. It's such a bad it's it's a it's a terrible joke. I, I can type it in our staff Discord channel, but Oh, is oh, it like is racist? It yeah, it's bad. <laughs> is it racist? <laughs> this is like Don't say yes to well, that, Frank. It, <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> is it racist? Yeah. I don't know if I want to no, say it. Like, it's not, but it's not, but let's not go. <laughs> there. Let's not say it for pot. Uh, that's just what oh Bob my God. It's yeah, teaching you that's typing. really funny. <laughs> okay, okay anyways. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to insist. People are gonna go crazy if we. Okay, ima- okay, teach us. Imagine a place where you. Imagine a place where you would go <laughs> to learn things, and then imagine weapons that you would not bring into that place because that yeah. would be inappropriate to do that there. Uh, imagine that, comparing then, one of the best games of the year to a national tragedy. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, but, but, but it's a national award? tragedy where there's not one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. If we could change That's the funny, world's so. school in that yeah. to yeah. something that was educational, we might get yeah. away with it. Educational shooter? I don't know. <laughs> It's so that doesn't American. sound bad. That's so like deeply softening. American for this to be funny. Educational shooter. <laughs> that sounds okay. <laughs> Just a coping okay. mechanism, Jesse. Moving on yeah. to next, yeah. the right. next three. So we have uh, we <laughs> have three <laughs> more, four more games to give awards here. Jesus. Um, the uh, the game is Homebody, Blasphemous Two, Bomb Rush, Cyberfunk, and Dave the Diver. Uh, let's start. Let's do them in that order. Let's start with. Homebody. Homebody is a game that got on uh, our radar, I think mostly, or if not entirely, through Jeremy Jane. Um, mm. This was made by the great Game Grumps people who previously worked on, uh, but what's the name of the great Dream Daddy? Dad? Boyfriend Dungeon? Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy. Which I always mess those two up. Sorry. Uh, it was Jeremy uh, put together a documentary about, uh, hosted by Alana Pierce back in the day with those folks. Um, and the this is a very different game <laughs> and not very <laughs> funny at all. It's a sort of, uh, I don't know, Jeremy, how would you describe Homebody to somebody, I guess? Like mechanically and also tonally. Yeah, yeah. So uh, mechanically first, because D- Jesse said something that totally hit upon what it is as a formula, which is that it is uh, Signalis meets Outer Wilds. I think that's a fantastic pitch for what it does because it is a, it is a survival horror game it's inspired by kind of 80s slasher movies, but it modernizes that formula so much. And it kind of like 80s horror movies are so deeply steeped in in schlock that is very hard. There are sometimes sincere moments in them, but the the overriding tone of them is like, you know, camp and schlock and like over the top, like, you know, someone standing there screaming as they get stabbed to death. Um, this This has elements of that, but more than anything it's kind of like a uh it's like if david lynch made an 80s slasher movie and then it just spiraled out into this kind of like maholland drive dream ish kind of nightmare um yeah it's i mean it's a survival horror game at the core of it with puzzles and uh kind of a haunted house game as well um it's hard to talk too much about without spoiling Yeah, I would say just for, to paint a sort of mechanical picture of it, it is a fixed camera perspective, sort of in the guise of a Resident Evil 1. Um, you know, you're in a house for most of it, all of it, whatever. You're you're walking through corridors and stuff. Um, the graphical style is kind of like Alone in the Dark or something. It's like yeah. an old PC, like late 80s, early 90s PC 3D stuff, where it's like, 
matte colors, but they've done some like shadow dithering or whatever. Like it's very old school in that way. Um, and it takes place. Uh, yeah, it it is a difficult one to talk about without spoiling entirely or spoiling it in parts. Not even the story, but just like the the puzzles and stuff. Is it fair to say that it's like a it's a it's a game where the sort of the house is the level, and you are unlocking rooms, unlocking doors, understanding puzzles um, more and more. And each time you sort of go through the house, you have a better understanding kind of of what you're meant to be doing, I guess. Yeah. So something that I, I feel like it's necessary to mention it. It's also featured pretty heavily in their marketing. So I feel like it's okay to talk about um, that. This is a time loop game. I also feel like the outer wilds thing kind of, you know, reveals that a yeah. little bit, but um, and, yeah, and, it, and it, it gets, you you experienced that in the first 30 minutes of it really. exactly yeah, so, yeah yeah it's it's not like the the big reveal is that time loops or whatever um but uh yeah basically you're you're a, a young woman going to a house to meet up with some old friends uh kind of like a, a vacation away with old friends renting a house uh to to get back in touch and uh and it's kind of it's kind of about that but it's also about like processing trauma it's about mental health and mental illness it's about uh you know, it's it's about how we deal with kind of like the lurking behind the ordinary things in everyday life are, are these concerns and worries that like if you re- like every time you get in a car, if you think about being in a car, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going 80 miles an hour in a 3000 <laughs> yeah. pound death machine. Or like every time you turn on the stove, you're like, oh, there's like hazardous fumes pouring into my home. Um, so it's a game that kind of deals with like. OCD, but also just the horror of ordinary life in a, in a way that I found really profoundly interesting. And uh, yeah, I think that that's one of my favorite things that um, that a piece of art can do is that it takes something that's not necessarily ordinary, but something that's very like relatable or something that everyone can kind of connect to. And then it um, it reframes it in an interesting way or it, it takes something that you take for granted, uh, something that like you gloss over. You just like you don't even think about your stove. You just walk past it. And you're like, isn't it scary that we all have like a pipe of gas in our house? And you're like, oh, shit, that is <laughs> kind of terrifying. So, yeah, it just it turns it's like ordinary life horror, but it's also like a, a slasher haunted house survival horror. Game. It's really, yeah. really good. And and the the sort of the progression of the game is basically like a almost like you know I guess old puzzle games most most like I think of Alone in the Dark or something like that or there's those are games or like even Lucas games or whatever those are adventure games those are games that like you're going to different places all the time this is more sort of like um, the Witness or uh, Mist or something like that where you're 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 in, there's all these sort of like you're, you're surrounded by puzzles and a lot of them are like well, I don't know what that is yet, or I don't yeah. know what this thing is yet. And and you're basically, there are ciphers and, and tips and um, tools and mechanisms in this house that you're sort of one by one in order, figuring them out. Uh, there's like new puzzle rooms um, and you're doing this, you know, the, it, it is linear. So like, you're not, it's not like you do one crazy run at the end. Like a, a lot of the stuff that you do, will on later runs the the rules change a little bit um here and there but it is mostly a puzzle there is a sort of an action of aspect to it i guess like you're running around the house and stuff um and it is definitely scary at times as well um but it is a game about puzzles and i'll say i would pat anyone on the back who could complete this game in a reasonable time without using a guide because there were two or three puzzles in this thing which i was just like no way in a month of Sundays I was not getting that one um, or uh, who knows because when the guide is there you always quit before yeah. you would have but like you know uh, that was the one thing I felt and I saw it in some of the comments on Steam and stuff as well people really like the game I think some of the puzzles in it are a little bit oof little I went tricky. through a lot of paper on this one I did not use it there I used a guide for an optional puzzle after I beat the game I wanted to go back and figure out what something was uh, but my girlfriend and I were on a call I streamed the entire game to her and our nice. two brains combined and a whole like <laughs> six pages of paper full of notes uh, we managed to solve it but yeah no they were I mean there were there were moments where some of these puzzles I was like going into a fugue state and <laughs> And Chelsea, my girlfriend, was like, you're never going to solve this. And I was like, no, it's like, there's rules. You just understand the rules. <laughs> and then, oh man, I had a similar thing with Kuon recently as I was playing Kuon. And one of the puzzles I spent an hour on, and then I looked it up, and it was it took it takes five seconds to solve. And I just oh, like, no. when you you're bash your head different... against a puzzle that long, yeah. it's so frustrating. <laughs> uh, Jesse, you've played this one as well, right? 
Yeah, I played it through to the end. I really, really enjoyed it. I think uh, I think Homebody is definitely one of the games this year that I wasn't expecting to like as much as I did. Yeah. Because uh, like going into it, you know, Game Grumps, there's a bit of, uh, you know, I, I think of, I always mess it up. It's Dream Daddy, right? It's not Boyfriend Dungeon. Yeah. I always, those two yeah. are the same spot <laughs> in my brain. Um, I think of that, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but Jeremy obviously liked it and Jeremy's got great taste. So I was like, I have to play this. I have to see what it is. It's also part of the list. So I had to play it anyway. Uh, <laughs> and it was like really, really good. I thought the puzzles were, I, I get the frustration. I think there's a couple where I was like, this is a little tough, um, but I did enjoy how they ended up sort of communicating bits of the of the puzzles and how the pieces showed up over time. I really liked the story of it. I like, well, the the concepts behind it anyways. And I think the thing that stuck out to me the most, and Jeremy mentioned this a bunch already, but I, I'm just going to go over it again, the the OCD aspects of the game and yeah. the way that it made me think about, because I mean, I don't suffer from, from OCD or anything, but uh, just the way I think about game play and game design and puzzle design and, and the repetition that comes into things and how, for whatever reason, this game is the only one that's ever made me go, oh, like that's what, that's the sensation that you get when you're doing that kind of stuff. Because in Homebody, it's it's delivering this idea of OCD, not just in like basic things that you see in the world, but in the way that you play it, because you're constantly putting in the same passcodes to open doors. Yeah. You're constant like you have a routine to how you start your day. And then sometimes you change it up a little bit. But for the most part, you have things that you do every single time until you've solved the puzzle. And again, I felt it in this, but I didn't feel in Outer Wilds or I didn't feel it in uh, the Sexy Brutale or like there's other games that do this kind of time loop thing where you repeat stuff over and over. But this is the first time I've ever clicked on that yeah. aspect of it. It's just really, really well designed. And obviously it's told in the story as well. So it kind of contextualizes it. But I just, I thought I was blown away by some of the stuff they do, especially a few of the final puzzles where I was like, wow, I cannot believe yeah. how smart and how connected to the concept that singular puzzle is like it's out wow i was just yeah the really the final puzzle of the game was was really close to home for me for what my when i because i have my ocd i consider myself to you kind of always have ocd i guess but like my ocd now is very 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 low and manageable and has been for 15 years at this stage well, that's cool. when i was a teenager i had i had it really really debilitatingly bad um and the final puzzle in this game was like oh boy like you're bringing me back there it was like i was i was waking up in my room at nighttime and having to run downstairs and do a bunch of stuff that i didn't knew i wasn't didn't want to do but i had to do it because if i didn't then my you know a bunch of bad stuff would happen to me and so there's a but there's so much. i was talking to jeremy about this a little bit we were kind of talking about it in ways that we probably wouldn't talk about it today because we don't want to spoil it but the game does a lot of like there's clearly ocd in there it's clearly anxiety there's clearly depression i think there's probably agoraphobia in there as well and yeah. just the nature of the game um and what i really found about it and i think this is like people if they're going to go play it should know that like this is not a game that has like a story that is it's a very like like you said more holland drive like lynchian kind of interpret this let it flow over you it doesn't have like a tidy little resolution at the end of it it's very much like here is a bunch of different concepts and thoughts and sort of let them wash through you and what i found interesting was that there were some elements of that with depression and ocd and anxiety that i was able to pick up on but then there was other ones like pick up on as in like oh i remember that feeling i've had that and then there was other a lot of other ones to your point jesse where i was like oh that makes sense now i get i understand why people feel that way sometimes like yeah i hadn't exactly. thought about it that way and it actually made me feel because I've, uh, you know, I go to therapy every week. I've had depression my uh, entire adult life, but I've always felt really grateful that my depression, even in my worst points, isn't as bad as like friends or mine who get in like a situation where they can't, can't leave the house for six months, right? Like, like I've seen that happen to good friends of mine and I've never really, you know, I've always felt like, oh, you know, I have depression too. But then when I was playing this game, I was like, oh yeah, like this is a really good example of just how less messed up a lot of my mental health stuff is in comparison to people who are like really suffering and are reminding me a lot of those people and and you know what they're going through and and in a way that was like not my experience it was communicating something else so yeah it does it does it really well like it's a smartly made game with the story but i think if you're expecting a story that sort of has a beginning middle end and a resolution to it it's messier than that it's not it's you're not going to get that from this game you know what i mean not yeah. like Dream Daddy, yeah. which does have that, you know. 
Um, I uh, I totally agree about everything you just said, especially the the way that the puzzles tie to the themes of the game is so rare for me because like Signalis is one of my favorite games of of my entire life. Uh, the one thing about Signalis that was maybe in my I think it's such a strong game like thematically and the gameplay is beautiful and everything. A few of the puzzles in Signalis felt to me like they were kind of um, you're playing a survival horror game and then you get into a room and someone hands you a page from like an unrelated puzzle book and they're like, hey, can you just like. <laughs> right. f- fill this out real like quick it's a, it's a puzzle like, that a survival horror game is supposed to have like yes, it's supposed exactly. to have this puzzle and in some it. of yeah. them were d- straight out of i think one of them was, might have been the same puzzle that was in code veronica or, like there was one from there's, there's a puzzle Resident that's Evil literally one. a puzzle yeah. from yeah. silent hill 2 <laughs> totally yeah, yeah exactly one, yeah. Like nice homage. Yeah. Um, but in in uh i almost said dream daddy now um in homebody uh <laughs> they kind of they almost rhyme too um in homebody the puzzles feel like they are expressions of the themes and that's like I don't know. It I that to me feels like rare and special and I think that that's a very hard thing to do as I've been working on my own games. It's it is there does sometimes feel like there's there's two ways you can start on a game idea. You either start with like a theme idea or a mechanical idea and then you kind of like work towards the one that you're not starting with and I think that either way you go it is a very difficult synthesis to achieve i think it's rare that as someone has an idea they're like oh what if it was a game about depression and you like had a gun that shot depression like you know what i mean and it's just like a perfect link um it's it's a hard <laughs> gap to bridge um yeah. and i think this game does it so elegantly uh, the other thing about the depression themes and the ocd stuff is that it's handled so sincerely um i think there is like in an era where there's a lot of like you know, social media posts, like TikTok videos about like, oh, this is what it's like to have ADHD. And there's kind of like, I, I'm not saying that there, it's not like flippant self-diagnosis because I think a lot of people do struggle with these things. And I think like pr- uh, probably some of them are undiagnosed or I think probably a lot of people have struggles that like they, you know, the, their parents are never like you have a, a real problem and you should see a doctor and then they just struggle with like elements that could potentially have overlap with those things or be those things. Uh and th- and then like I've that has kind of spiraled out into like a lot of media that's like I'm so depressed I guess I'll just kill myself and it's <laughs> I feel like this game is so sincere with it and it's not like like it's funny but it's not saccharine no it's it, not, yeah it's not saccharine yeah. it's, it's it's just sincere it's like it's yeah, self aware but it's also sincere yeah. and it's not like I agree yeah it's not it's not laid it on too thick it's it's aware that like those things can quickly become saccharine and sappy and self serious uh, yeah but, and there is humor and stuff it just feels to me like the way that uh when i've had conversations with friends in the past who were struggling or when i was struggling um the way that like when you're talking to your closest friends i feel like if you tell someone that you don't know that well like i'm really depressed they're like oh that's really sad i'm, I'm so sorry you're dealing with that i feel like if you tell your best friend that you're so depressed they're like god man that like sucks i've been going through that too and then they but, kind of like make a joke that digs you out of it a little bit or something like there's a balance between sincerity and like levity that this game strikes really well or they, yeah. they never use it as a motivator for you to feel bad for the protagonist yes like they even get into like very real situations like conversations i've been in um i feel like i've been on both sides of where there's a great little exchange between um the the main character and one of their um uh, comrades about how you know you're doing it again like you're 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 just we had this conversation three days ago like why are you still feeling this way like why you know like i can't keep doing this i can't keep listening to you about you know is it's very like there's no it's 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 not fetishizing mental health in any way and it's also not pulling its punches it's very like sincere as you said in a way that like yeah is probably a lot it seems to do it very easily but it's probably impossible to pull that off. You yeah. know what I mean? It didn't have to do it. It didn't have to have such mature writing for its characters and its cutscenes and like moments where, yeah, they're just having a conversation, talking about their problems, talking about life. Like, yeah, the dialogue in this game was, yeah, sincere is the right word, but I feel like just, and maybe it's, I'm just trying to knock anything, but it's very mature. It's a very mature written game. I just felt very, yeah, I, don't know. What, what I just I, really enjoyed it. Yeah. I will say though that uh, it's not, I think sometimes when we talk about games, writing, it starts like loftily. It, maybe it starts to make people think like, oh, is this a smart person's game? It's not doing that either. It's not no, trying to yeah. be yeah, no. smarter than it is or like loftier than, or like, you know, a show pony for somebody's writing or whatever. Like, you know, I was happy, you know, in some of those cut streams, bouncing through the dialogue, you know what I mean? Like reading it faster and going through and like it lets you skip stuff if you want. Like it's very, it's not... It's not holding your, you know, your 
your f- f- toes to the irons on 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 listen to the, this important message we have. You know what I mean? Either, yeah. which no, I think yeah. is is cool. Like it kind of lets you fuck with it if you want, but then it, you can also just play this puzzle game that's yeah. that's terrifying. If yeah, you, if and and you want. like there's like a there's like a giant hot dog with bastard written on it and stuff. Like there's like <laughs> there's there's silly shit in this game too. It's it funny in times. Yeah, it's really yeah. yeah I think it it balances. Uh, there, uh, Leighton Gray, one of the two leads on this project, has a. I think it's a GDC talk. I'll I'll look it up while we're talking, and I'll mention it at the end. But has a talk about yeah. um like uh, meta modern theory and uh, like narrative crafting. Um, and th- part of that is talking about how you need to balance this kind of like the like romanticism of modernism with like the the cynical like postmodern deconstructive like let's take that all apart let's like knock o- topple over the idols and like nothing is sacred and when you can balance those two it it mm. yields this like quote unquote meta modern perspective this more kind of authentic perspective because like that like i said when you're talking to your best friends it's like that's that's a realer perspective it's neither saccharine and romanticizing like oh like right. woe is me and like depression is this like demon i struggle with but it's also not like oh i'm so depressed ah. like it's not yeah. it's just like it's it has to balance both of them to be real and i think that's a very difficult balance to strike and to you know what like you said danny it like it, this is a game that takes itself seriously but is never trying it's never loftily dealing with these subjects and it doesn't leave you feeling like you're reading someone who's trying to do like a mary shelley impression or doing like yeah, 1800s yeah. gothic literature it's it feels like and it's not contemporary and real or pre it's not preachy at all yeah. and, and if anything it's uh, you know it's 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 very I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's authentic. I guess is is the word that it comes across. It just feels like yeah, this is good. this is a world this is a world that has existed, and these dynamics of these friendships seem incredibly real, and especially in like a people in their thirties kind of way, where like they're doing mm. this get together, but it's like every time they do it, it feels like it's the last time they're doing it because yeah. it feels less and less like they're they're all drifting off in their own ways. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, Homebody, Frank, did you play much of Homebody? No, it, it was one of those things I wanted to play and then stuff happened, so yeah, I couldn't. But I did play the first, like, maybe 30 minutes or an hour. The art style is so cool. Like, mm. that itself. Yeah, very Resident Evil, very, you guys mentioned Alone in the Dark, like, 90s uh, PC gaming. Like, so that in itself wants me to play more. I wish I could play more and add to it, because, like, I also have OCD, and, like, hearing Jeremy, in it, like, like praise it for its depictions, like, oh, I, I want to crack into it at some point. But, yeah, I tried playing it, and, like, at this current state, it's like, oh, I, I can't handle any puzzle game stuff. Yeah. But you know, I, I did say I started playing it on the Steam Deck. I think too, it does run on Steam Deck. It's, oh, cool. it's like gamepad appropriate. Um, but yeah, I just just didn't have the bandwidth for it. But the art style itself is very cool. If you like '90s survival horror, yeah, yeah, good art style, good sound design. Doesn't have voice acting, but I mean, I feel like it would be annoying if it did because I was able <laughs> to read it so much faster than they could say it. So um, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a fun game to like control. Like this fixed camera perspective as well can sometimes not work, and they use it in very smart ways. There's only a couple of hallways where I was like doing the tank controls thing, where it flips over when you move to the next scene. It does the thing where it retains your, you know, if you're yeah, walking yeah. straight. But then there was somewhere I had to turn, and then doing that would make me go back in that room. But it always seemed to be happening in places where I didn't want to be dilly dallying if that makes sense which felt somewhat intentional maybe so i was yeah it feels um it was cool i was really glad to have played it i definitely feel like it was a game that i wouldn't have necessarily after the first 30 minutes i might necessarily have played a lot of it because it felt like it was more narrative heavy than i was expecting but um i'm glad that jeremy and this list sort of pushed me through because i ended up just eating it up i couldn't put it down i was I'm like so i think jeremy you, played had, it, dude. You, you, you had a similar thing i remember when you said you played this you kind of went through it in like two days right you yeah yeah, of, yeah um yeah i did the same thing i couldn't i couldn't stop thinking about it yeah it's a very good it's like eight ish hours i think it took me to beat it i think this is a good like two four hour session game um which that's kind of my ideal length for especially with such heavy themes if there was like a Baldur's gate yeah. three about ocd i'd be like <laughs> dying dude i can't, I can't do like uh, hour yeah. 80 it's like and then i checked the stove for the 20th time I'm like dude i can't do this 
Uh, it might be difficult to give this one uh, an award because the writing is so, like you said, on that knife edge. But did did you come with a couple of bullets in the chamber, Jeremy? Do you have some ideas? I did not think about it. I wanted to just oh, no shoot from the hip here. Um, okay. Yeah, with the something about like authenticity or sincerity, I feel like. Uh, the, the this is low hanging fruit, but the certificate of authenticity is kind of a dumb <laughs> double entendre there. <laughs> I kind of like it actually. I know it's not bad. It's just it's like it doesn't. I I feel like with some of the other titles being so clever, I'm like oh they came too easy. But it's a that's the problem. It's something we can't, we can we can't climb back. down from the mountain of Zane Loft and Lifetime and Cheap. Yeah, the master of remaking <laughs> is just the bar is so high now. Um, certificate of authenticity is pretty funny. Um. Yeah, what else? It's hard. I don't want to make light of any of the mental health stuff. Yeah. So it feels like it's, you know, um Yeah, best like depression. I, best, uh, yeah, like I couldn't put it down. Mo- yeah. you know, it's, you know. <laughs> Most sure that the stove is off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um yeah, it's a tricky one. It's it also is like genre it's it's it doesn't it feels very unique. Like I don't really it's taking pieces of games, but I imagine this is the problem they had in marketing this thing. Yeah. I'd say number one, yeah. Jeremy was making the point of like Game Grumps is a very, at least on the YouTube side, you're thinking like, oh, if they're working on a game, then surely at least all that YouTube audience will go play it. But this is not a comedy game. And like Dream Daddy is not a comedy game either, but it's there's more levity and jokes in it. Yeah. Um, whereas in a thing like this, it's hard to, there's definitely some, you know, smirky bits, but like it ain't that. Yeah, um, Dream Daddy worked better for them because I feel like Dream Daddy, the way Vernon Sh- uh, Vernon Shaw, I think his last name is Vernon uh, from Dream Daddy right, explained yeah. it was that um, uh, Dream Daddy is like a Trojan horse where you're like, oh, it's funny, it's like a it's like a dad dating simulator, it's jokey, and then lol, once, gay people, yeah, like, exactly, and yeah. once you're through the door because you're like, oh, Game Grumps and like dad dating, that's funny, then the Trojan horse reveals itself and the right. the the sincerity pops out and you're like, it gets you. Whereas this is like. There's no, there's no ironic uh, meta layer to it that you have to penetrate. It's just like, how do you make silly jokes about this like incredibly sincere game? Right. Um, uh, we had the occult classic one for Weird West last oh, yeah. year. Um, this feels cult classicy in a way that where it's like, or Lynchian. We could put. Lin- I don't want to. I don't. Lynch- Lynchian is such a fucking well trod upon yeah. term at this stage and it feels like it's lost all meaning which is a shame because this is incredibly that i know um, um, in way in some ways at least um uh, something about like something about the connection between like haunted houses and the like my like my mind is a haunted house if we could find like a pithy way to put that there's something about like your that. mind prison like your your <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, best mind prison the uh, speaking of lynchian i the, just because you're this this is why this game is lynchian david foster wallace has my favorite definition of lynchian which was that it refers to a particular kind of irony where the very macabre and the very mundane combine in such a way <laughs> as to reveal the former's perpetual containment within the latter yes yeah and which i can like think perfect. of no it's perfect, and I think a lot of people's depression is rooted in that. Yeah, is rooted in that type of thing, being trapped by the mundane yeah. and being sort of, uh, um, and its awfulness seeping into you. Um, um, yeah, this might be one we have to come back to a couple of times. Um, anything else about? I guess it has a Resident Evil fixed camera. It's kind yeah. of right. It's not, but it's but it's so not retro in basically every other way. So you know, it doesn't feel like you're playing Mist or anything like that. Um, yeah, survival horror, puzzle of the mind or something. Puzzle of, mind, puzzle yeah, yeah. of the mind. mind puzzle. Yeah, something about mind that. Puzzle. Something about like like mental health or like depression or mental illness being like related to puzzles or like survival therapy. Puzzles. Yeah, yeah. Most therapeutic. <laughs> Most therapeutic. Ooh, the CBT award. The CBT <laughs> award. <laughs> uh, give it a, yeah. Um, you know, what's the book again? What's that mental, uh, my wife is a therapist. She'd kill me for not remembering this. Well, there, there's that Is that book. what it's called? My wife is a therapist. She'd kill me for not remembering it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's there's a good name a, for a book. There's a, there's like a book that has like, they redo it every year where it has like all the diagnoses. Oh, the DSM. Yeah, the DSM. Yeah. DSM five. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. something there. That's good. They update it all every year. It's like, what are they going to say about fibromyalgia this year? Yeah, yeah. Is, there, is depression you know, real this year? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> gonna, yeah. It's uh, it's all over the. It's all yeah. DSM. It's a bit. 
DSM. It's a bit inside baseball. FPS, like it. You could call it DSM FPS yeah, or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something about like diagnosis though, or like diagnosis. Yeah, there's something about like diagnosis. Yeah. yeah. Diagnosis. If all we need is a little double entendre that slips into I know one of these. Therapy. I'll write down therapy as well. Again, don't want to be gauche though, but it's like I know I'm looking up like therapy words, and I'm like I don't want to make light of like <laughs> chronic depression. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Shall we move on to the next game? Come back. Yeah. That might be the toughest hill to climb today. Uh, the next game is Blasphemous Two. Um. This. So who's played this? Let's. Do, I should have done that first of all last time. Who's played this? Jesse's played it. We all, it. Frank's we all played finish it. it. Played it. I did not finish it, but I played uh, okay. six ish hours, a little more than six hours. That's enough. Oh, cool. I have, uh, I have played it. How dare you, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, like it. To be clear, okay, yeah, it's okay. You cannot like it as well, I guess. But just how, how yeah. dare you, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Frank? How much have you played? I think five hours, four or five okay, hours. Okay, cool. And Jesse, what about yourself? Yeah, all the way to the end. All the way. Yeah, Jesse completes yeah. every game over here. He's like so. Jesse's good. He's a gamer. Yeah, it's wild. He he's, a, he's a true gamer, capital games. G gamer. He even completed a Homebody as well. Without a, without a, did you use a guide at all for Homebody? No. Hell yeah. <sighs> I'm just dumb. I think that's it. I'm no, just, nah. it's the puzzles. Dumb, dumb. As soon as they threw math puzzles in there, I'm like, this isn't, there's a lot of people who are going to walk <laughs> away from this. <laughs> the Cypher one, I couldn't. Yeah, it was too much. Um. Anyway, uh, Blasphemous 2, created by uh, The Game Kitchen, which is a studio, I believe, based in, I think it's Galicia in northern Spain. They're somewhere in Spain anyway. Um, Metroidvania sequel to Blasphemous, which is a game that um, perhaps part of the reason why I enjoyed this so much is because I had not played Blasphemous, the first one at all. So I was super late to the party on this. I've gone back and played it since uh, playing this game. It is a, a Metroidvania in the with an art style that feels very uh, gothic, like so many of those games, but more sort of... Uh, Catholic guilt, very much like a, a Goya painting, who is a Spanish artist who did a lot of um, sort of, uh, what would you say, I, I'm not an art critic, so I don't know the terminology very well, but like very sort of realistic, using a lot of darkness, uh, a lot of skin, uh, a lot of like uh, religious imagery, iconography, but attached to its corporeal state, so very much sort of tied into life and mortality and death. And the rights of those uh, things, like the 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 rights when you die, the right of birth, uh, the you know the right of uh, um, uh, uh, dev- devotion to a religion, like uh, stuff that is very steeped in Irish Catholicism, that made me feel, uh, and Spanish Catholicism as well. Um, Irish and Spain have a Ireland and Spain have a lot in um, common. My my surname is a Spanish surname. There's a lot of um, shared sort of Celtic uh, uh, um, history there as well, um, religiosity. So to me, it like I just found the themes of this game, the look of it, um, incredibly compelling. Yeah. And then the gameplay loop that the whole thing was in was just amazing. I loved the combat in this game. Like very, I hate bringing up. Souls born, but it is, it felt like that for large parts of it, the boss fights, especially. But then again, I don't have much experience in playing Castlevania games and stuff like that. So I really don't, I, you know, this could be just a, a blind spot in my head that, that that's where that stuff's coming from. Um, this might be my favorite game of the year. I absolutely gobbled it up. I was so sad when it was over. Um, and I adored it, but I'm excited to hear uh, what you guys thought of it. Jesse, let's go with you first of all. Um, sure. Since you completed uh, it. What, what do you make of Blasphemous 2? And you had played the first one, right? Yeah, I played through the first one. I didn't play the DLC that they put out over time, which I've heard are very good. Uh, I know there's like a mode for the first one as well that's all voiced in an old Spanish language, I believe, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, I haven't played through that, but yeah, uh, Blasphemous 2 is, yeah, I think, and I said this when we talked about it first on the first episode of this uh, four part Goatee series. Go back and listen to that one. Uh, about how Blasphemous 2 is really just doing Metroidvania really well. It's doing things that I've seen every game in the genre that I've played do. It has sequences that are very similar to other games. Like, I don't want to say anything specific, but there's stuff that happens in Blasphemous 2 where I'm like, oh, okay, I've seen that in this one. And then Ori does this. I'm like, oh, this is in Metro. And like, none of that, that's not an, an indignation of the game. I think Blasphemous 2 is still firing on all cylinders. And like you said, just because it's a blind spot doesn't make that necessarily a bad thing, right? It's it's just because it's good in comparison to other games that are great or amazing or anything to me in terms of gameplay and, and their systems and their like uh, novelty, 
that doesn't make Blasphemous too bad. I think where Blasphemous 2 excels is, yeah, one, in its presentation. The music is phenomenal. Oh, my God. It's yes. so fun. Like, it's, it's fast. It's that classical guitar, uh, the sort of um, flamenco sound that you get when they're, yeah. they're just going Spanish crazy. guitar. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's my beautiful. God. It's beautiful. It's so good. It's so energetic. It feel, like it totally fits the tone of the game and the world. And obviously the the team is from Spain, like you said. So that's going to lie into it as well. Um, and then the pixel art is just some of the best of the year. I'd argue probably some of the best uh, in the last couple of years. It's so dynamic and fluid. And, and you can see all these little individual things. And it's gross. Like it's really gross, but it's also <laughs> very beautiful. Like it's it's got this, it's got everything that you're looking for, I think, when you want this kind of presentation of of that kind of game where they're capturing like a souls like Metroidvania. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a misnomer because it's how soulsy is it? But if you want that kind of thing, you want that sort of, how's it going to lean into its inspirations? I think blasphemous Two does a really, really fantastic job in its presentation and the things that they clearly have reverence for when it comes to the Metroidvania genre, what they take from that and apply to their game is super just like they've, they've noted all these really well done things and done their own version of it uh in a in a really polished form i i really enjoyed it that's cool so it's sort of to to your mind and this is the vibe i got when i went i went back and played blasphemous one where it was like oh this feels like the first draft of blasphemous two in a way where you're like which makes sense right like this even came up in the nhl 94 documentary where sometimes it takes you two or three games to make the game you're originally trying to make and and yeah like what i found is like the controls and blasphemous one felt nowhere near as like fluid and sticky and uh, as in Blasphemous 2, the art style, the music, the way the levels are laid out. Um, the One of the things that really impressed me about Blasphemous 2 was the amount of different biomes that there's like yeah. 14 or 15 different regions in this map. It's crazy. At the start, I was like, oh, it might be six or seven. I just you kept finding more. And every time I found one, I was like delighted. Like I've played these games where I'm like, oh man, like I'm just... This is such a struggle. Like, will you, like the, by the end of a game like Bloodborne, I was like, I need this to end. <laughs> like, I really <laughs> like this game, but this is killing me. I need it to end. Whereas every time, every new area in Blasphemous, and I think I was also, I heard some, I saw some people on Twitter and stuff complaining about specific boss fights they had a lot of trouble with. And for whatever reason, I was able to, sometimes you just have to be in the right tempo to beat a boss yeah. like to sort of just feel the beat of the fight and every time i think i only repeated one of them three times and a couple of them i did first time a lot of them i did second time because it was like oh that's what you do and then did it um uh so i think i was lucky i probably could have got hung up on some of them if i played them and i didn't i wasn't in that rhythm or whatever um but yeah and, and the beauty every it was there was another there's another line from uh, our upcoming monkey island documentary where uh the art director for that game says that uh, i think i mentioned this on a previous podcast that the uh, problem with um adventure games is that there's no like xp or money we can give you so the only <laughs> thing we can award you with is new art <laughs> it's like a new place to walk around and blasphemous 2 felt like a game where whenever i was in a new area i was just so happy to explore it they did a lot of like um palette swapping or changing out this the 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 enemies that they're like a sort yeah. of a known quantity but they modify them a little bit which i really liked i, I liked that it wasn't just like you know the same ones or it wasn't totally different ones it was kind of like easy to get into the new ones there were so many interesting like little mechanics you were doing to unlock you know like finding the weird little nuns <laughs> like oh, they were yeah. hiding all the, the sort room. of secret stuff yeah oh, I the love secrets that. they were so good or that late like i will forever be haunted by the lady where you upgrade your blood files with. Oh, as time and, goes on? Yeah, the, that was the, gruesome. The cherubs just like holding her skin and, and how messed up that gets. Yeah. Like by the end of it, it's just, there's so much, all that stuff. The the guy who asks you to kneel, you know, like oh, the lady oh, yeah, in the yeah, bed the, yeah. who's like the lady who's dying in the bed surrounded by all of her. Dude, the giant children. floating hand that people are smooching. Oh yeah, it's a, yeah. That yeah. sorry, that's the one. Yeah, I want you to kneel. Yeah, the weird hand you kiss. Yeah, this. Yeah, it's so evocative, and I don't like in a way it stirs up. Like I think I've said before, like we had painting like Goya and Caravaggio paintings up in my very Catholic. I went to like a Catholic school where there were brothers living in the building, and there was like a six story thing. Uh, I used to joke to my wife that she. 
went to Hogwarts because she went to a, a boarding school when she was in school. And then she, when she came to my hometown for the first time and saw my school, she was like, no, you literally went to Hogwarts because it's like you all were like, it was a huge big building with like a thousand kids all wearing the same uniform, all boys. It was super religious. I, I mean, because Ireland is like it wasn't any more religious than any other part of Ireland. But um, And yeah, so in a way, this felt very like dark and soothing like it was very it made me it made me miss my spirituality like i don't like i'm not a practicing catholic anymore i don't believe in all that stuff but there's something very comforting uh, from like a childish level it, it made I you miss it in the way miss. that like the stories are told and like it just brought back all these good memories of like things that it happen was, in church it, or was that what ireland's like is are there just like gods that come it, down and tell you things or <laughs> Like, no, it's well. They, they one thing that the, <laughs> well, St. Patrick's did a lot of those early uh, Catholic pre- Christian preachers did is they didn't destroy a lot of our old gods. They destroyed some of them, but they, they kept a lot of them. So we had a weird polytheistic, like very like uh, pagan religion in Ireland, mm. and you get some of that stuff in mythos and banshees and lepre- well, banshees and leprechauns aren't gods, but um, Dia de Danum and all this stuff. Anyway, that's for a different podcast. Um, the uh, no, it was just like like silly things like the sound of a chorus reverberating mm. around a, a church. Like things that just like lizard brain remind me of being a comforted child and knowing that everything would be okay. And that like I would see people after they passed away and like, you know, things like that, you know, yeah. sort of. Th- yeah. So in a way it was just like, attach- that's a very, you know, subjective reason why I like this game. Um Jeremy, how much of this did you play yourself? I played uh, you said six hours, like six and a half hours. Yeah, um, I I really like this game. It grew on me over time. Um, initially, I I feel like I made a dumb move by kind of just beelining like left to right, and I I went so far, like I <laughs> skipped way past the first boss and just kept going and going and going. And this is <laughs> I would like because there's not an immediate fast travel to any shrine or things like you know it 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 is a game that I would almost describe as um it's like heavy or something like it's interesting because mm. the, the movement is like you jump super high in the air and your movement is very fluid and fast but the the kind of defining characteristic of this game i would say is that it feels like heavy and oppressive uh the thing that sets it apart from other metroidvanias to me is that um uh like unlike hollow knight there's not an air dash immediately so you're not like dashing over enemies you're not like when you get to an area you can kind of jump over dudes but there are some areas where to traverse them you literally have to fight everyone in them or risk losing all your health or dying immediately just from normal guys right. uh and the other thing is that there's no iframes on the dash so like uh yeah. salt and sanctuary for example um which danny if you haven't played salt and sanctuary uh, you would really like that no really and i good think too. you both yeah. recommended it to me last time we talked about blasphemous yeah. as well i have to go back and play Do that, yeah. played salt and sanctuary not salt and sacrifice play the old one, not the old one. um <laughs> is it that much worse i don't want to talk shit but okay anyway sorry <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah it's not hmm. very good um I so there because of the lack of iframes, the lack of an air dash, like I found myself going through areas and like I got frustrated initially in my first session because I went too far and then I was like, oh, now I got to re traverse all of this. And then I was like, I'll just, I'll just like blast past like you do in a Metroidvania. And I kept dying. And I was like, I don't know if I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm because I was rushing it, I was getting my ass kicked. And then when I slowed it way down, it's like, it's not that the movement is slow, it's that the game wants you to feel the oppressiveness of its atmosphere and confront each of these enemies and learn their patterns. Uh, and until you play it the way that it wants you to play it, it's going to kick your ass and, you know, like an old lady is going to shoot spectral crows at you when you're trying to skip past her. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, the so death good. animation that on is, that lady is really cool, too. Oh, it's I love amazing. how the crow yeah. like, comes the over and eats her after you kill yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so uh, good. Yeah. Very cool. The, the, so that gets to the other thing that I loved about this game, which you kind of, you guys touched upon a little bit, but the uh, the it feels like a very uh mature game in its in its aesthetic and themes and like mechanics but the the i feel like there's a there's a tendency in a lot of pixel art especially like new pixel art to kind of like look back on the 16-bit era of like kind of cutesy pixel art and like old square soft rpgs and try to emulate that feel where like pixel a lot of people associate pixel art with like cutesiness yes and this yeah. is this is such a mature 
pixel like it's some of the best looking pixel art i've ever seen in my life oh um, and animation is just yeah. incredible the animation is unbelievable yeah. there were like there's one area where you're walking and there's like a there's a city in the background and there's a body of water reflecting it and it has parallax with the background and i just <laughs> i walked back and forth just to like check it out for probably like three full minutes because it's <laughs> so beautiful um yeah it just it really does feel like a metroidvania set in a pixel art version of a goya painting i think you nailed it with that it like uh, and and the music too, like uh, you know, Castlevania games. That obviously, because of technical limitations at the time, the music is very. It's not chip tuny, but it's got that kind of like digital old console sound to it. The the like fully instrumental flamenco guitars, the maturity of the pixel art. It just this feels like a grown up Metroidvania in such a way um, that it just felt like yeah, I don't know. I just felt like I was like uh, there's a, there's a phrase that I really like in. I'm trying to remember. I think it's from the War of Art, the Stephen Pressfield book, where he says that when you read the writing of like a truly great writer, it feels like you're like you're swimming in holy water. Like the whole time you're in <laughs> that work, you're just submerged in this like totally immersive, totally confident piece of work that you you don't even have the room to like doubt it or get distance from it or be like, oh, did they do this right? And Blasphemous 2, to me, once it once I understood the pace of it and what it wanted me to do and it really got its hooks into me, it just felt like every new, I just was like waiting for it to show me what it had next. And I was just like, I, I'm definitely going to complete this game. I really like it now. Awesome. Yeah. The, mechanically, there's so many, like each new area has its own thing going on as well. Like some of them are very tall, some of them are wide, the sort of normal Metro of any affair. And then there's lots of ones with like teleportation or, you know, I kind of don't want to spoil some of them, but like yeah. there's, there's a lot of um, interesting, like ways in which you need to play this game. And then you're constantly upgrading your sort of two sets of weapons or three sets of weapons um, throughout it as well, um, uh, which adds its own flair to it uh, yeah i i adore this game it's funny it's like the original one has like twenty nine thousand reviews and it's a very positive and then the secret only has five thousand which i i wonder Give it time. yeah hopefully it'll it'll build slowly it'll it'll make it up there it was published by team 17 who i know have had a bit of a, a rocky financial year so i don't know if maybe it didn't get the marketing push or i, I can't tell this is all just me uh, thinking um there is also a documentary about the making of the first game that they produced themselves. Oh, and I cool. didn't realize until just now, but there is a Dev Diary series on Team 17's channel. But if you go to the Game Kitchen's YouTube channel, they have a um, a playlist of it here, which is basically a bunch of videos. They're all like documentary in style between 8 and 12 minutes each. Um, uh, uh, Dev Diaries of them making Blasphemous 2. So it's really cool stuff. So if you want to check those things out, you know, always a massive fan of developers um doing this themselves like uh, uh, uh telling their own stories um so it's very cool to to see them doing this um yeah blasphemous too any ideas about names for this one i feel like it's easy to do a pun on one of the older metroidvania games like symphony of the night or something oh yeah oh, that's right. good homily yeah, of the night homily of the night <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, something uh, I the thing that occurs to me is that the it's it's like a mature Metroidvania. So I'm trying to think of like, you know, like I mean, I guess Castlevania. A mature Metroidvania. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Let's don't no <laughs> more just, ideas. Sorry, done. Just write it down. Let's move on. <laughs> if we can, if there's something a Catholic guilt, if we can get guilt oh, yeah. to get reminded or or something else, or um, yeah, this is a tough one. They're all going to be tough today. I, I know. Yeah, we That's had so many problem. bangers last week. We got spoiled, or last episode. <laughs> uh, um, I also somehow copied over all the names in this document, so I'm just fixing it now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Blasphemous. Yeah. I'm gonna like, write the... It, the fact that it hmm. feels like a Renaissance painting, like it, it's like I'm trying to synthesize in my brain, like if... Uh, you know, like a, I wouldn't use that word in particular because that's that's a few hundred years earlier. Okay, okay. But then Renaissance fairs seem to have no fucking problem oh, with it true. either. Yeah. In that it's like the fucking Middle Ages when the Renaissance fairs. Um, anyway. it's got it's also got like kind of a Hieronymus, Hieronymus Bosch thing to it, or like a Caravaggiovania. Oh, yeah, that's not bad actually. Like I, the that. only problem with Caravaggiovania is that it is it is so close to Goya yeah. that it's like I, I I it would be. It's almost, a, but you're, that would be really good otherwise. Fuck. Yeah. It's like a um, Goyavania, something like that. Yeah, Goyavania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Goya was Spanish too. Um, yes. 
Yeah, Goya old. Uh, okay, funny. wait, wait. Goya is part of the old masters. Maybe there's something there. It's very painterly. It's very Catholic. It's like you're inside a painting too. It's like something. There's something about that. Prayer. Oh man. Oh man. We might have to come back to this one as well. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. Tough. Okay. It's good well, to we'll save a couple there There's around. no Frank. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, the problem. Exactly. No yeah, Frank is Frank is uh, had to do go off and do something. We'll get him back in a second. Um, uh, okay, let's leave it there for now. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about Bomber Cyberfunk and Dave the Diver, and then we'll give out some of these awards. All right. Hell yeah. All right. Cool. All right. See you on the other side. Hello, friends. Welcome to the intermission. It's Danny here, and I'm going to read out some names of some beautiful people who support us monetarily. And uh, in so doing, we send them tiny little flecks of skin and eyelashes and stuff for them to create their own versions of us in their homes. Those people are Harry Flanagan, Battle Royale Games, Arno, Richard Matherson, James Brown, Jason Drury, Mark Rojas, Ryan Cobb, Tucker Morgan, Crimson Cyclist, Sven Hooster, Tim Robinson, Forrest Bruish, Eric, Hamil Eric Hamilton Schneider, or as I was about to say, Eric Hamilton, Hamilton Schneiderton, Cameron Ladd, Alex Sharp. Alex Goucher, George Sakotis, Jacob Godserve, Tohir Tiliev, and of course, Ryson. Thank you all so much. Your toenails are in the mail. Hello, welcome back to No Clips. Game of the Year, episode three of four. We have two more games to just talk about. That's the beauty of our Game of the Year, is that we don't spend the entire thing shit talking other games to get our game high up the list. <laughs> There is no need. We did all that in the first episode and we used it to kind of uh, celebrate the games that did not make the top 10 because they were also great games. Um, so we're going to talk up by, uh, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk and Dave the Diver. Now we're going to attempt to give them their own awards as well as Homebody and Blasphemous 2. We're really struggling. We we did all the, we had all the juice. We're like the Oakland Raiders who couldn't couldn't get a point on the board five days ago. This is going to sound, this is going to go week old. Yeah. It's not going to make any sense. And then I think they scored 63 points yesterday. Um, so, you know, there you go. Sports. Everyone loves sports. Let's talk about uh, maybe the most sporty game we have on this list. The extreme actually. sporty game. That's for exactly. sure. Exactly. Extreme. Mm. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Straight to the top of my dome was this game. Rocking that microphone. Ooh. <laughs> Fuck. Got bars. Um, this game uh, from the good folks at Team Reptile, which is also just a terrifically named studio. Uh, who was the main lover of this? I mean, I think we all really like it. Is it Frank? Yeah, yeah. Frank. Frank why don't you tell us what, what it is about? I mean, it's not that hard to yeah. guess if you know Frank Cowley and you've seen <laughs> 20 seconds of the two seconds of this game playing. You could probably put it together yourself. But what is it, Frank, about Bomb Rush Saba Funk that you love so much? This is Jet Set Radio 3. I mean, funny enough, Sega <laughs> finally just announced they're working on a new Jet Set, but Bomb Rush Saba Funk beat him to the punch. Yeah, Jet Set Radio, Jet Grind Radio, Jet Set Radio Future. So my like top 10 games of all time. Uh, and then similarly to this game, like th it's definitely a game where the aesthetic and vibe is better than the gameplay itself because there's stuff that is frustrating, but it doesn't matter because it's so cool. And it's also left such a huge imprint on me. Music, like aesthetic, the whole Japanese kawaii-ness of it. Um, but yeah, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Finally, again, like there's been a huge like hole of like extreme sports games. There was the Tony Hawk remix a few years ago, and then Activision was like, never mind, work on Diablo 4. Um, and so like <laughs> it sucks. And and like I always I love Sega games and just that the whole Dreamcast aesthetic. And this is the most like Dreamcast ass game to have come out in quite some time. Um, and uh yeah, I mean every element of it like visually it's kind of got this almost cell shaded very again just just continuing the torch that just hit radio future this very like anime cell shaded kind of blocky but hyper like i don't know pointed with its art direction to to give you this like early 2000s shibuya key live action anime like it looks like fully coolie come to life maybe specifically because color yeah the, and the color palette mm -hmm. Mm. is like crazy like the color of the sky and walls are like they work so well together but they're not you know the, each area as well mixes that stuff up like i don't know what you'd call the color palette is like it's very vibrant it's like the saturation is turned up but the number of colors they're using is turned down you know what i mean like the areas are this is mostly a blue and a brown area but you're gonna get like 40 shades of brown cell shaded and they're all gonna look kind of cool 
Yeah, it's uh, I don't, I, the, the term I use a lot, and it's not necessarily that, but like the Sega Blue. Like when you look at Sega arcade games in the '90s, yeah. the sky is the most blue, gorgeous thing ever. And then the yeah, like I'm thinking of Daytona. Then it's like the green, red, right. blue. It's it's primary colors, so bright, so maximized. Um, and uh, it just feels good to just skate around. I mean, that's the core of it. Is it's a you know like Jet Set Radio, but you can either roller skate, BMX, uh, skateboard, or just walk around in. But it's it's very the game has a flow state. You're grinding and you everything is like designed so you can create lines. Again, like a Tony Hawk game, like Jet Set Radio. Beyond that, you are doing graffiti uh, like Jet Set Radio. The one huge quality of life thing that they knocked uh, away from Jet Set Radio is you don't have to collect no spray, spray cans. cans. You can oh, just infinitely God. spray paint, right? Oh, like, yeah. That, that was something that was always... Yeah, Jesse, go for it. Go for it. It was just... I, I've never really gotten into the Jet Set games. You just reminded me how frustrating it was, though. Because I did the first maybe hour or two of Jet Set Radio. Uh, I did the tutorial for like an hour. I couldn't stop. I was like, I have to get the maximum score you can get. It took forever. Got it. Felt great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, when you try to do graffiti... Because out, outside in the world in Jet Set Radio and in Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, uh, a lot of the gameplay is... And specifically, I'm, I'm mentioning Bomb Rush here, is developing your rep. And building up your reputation in the area with the other, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gangs? That's the right Cruise word. Crews? Crews? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're trying to like develop rep and, and be better than them and take over their area. And to do that, you tag, you do graffiti, you have special art that you can find in the world. And in order to put it on the walls, you do these little fun little actions with your thumbstick. And it's like a really interesting way of doing it because it's not just like up, down, left, right. It's like up and then after you go up, left and right are two different forms of graffiti after that and like there's just so many different things you can do so you kind of get these little combos in your head that you're doing while you're grinding and if you can get the paint while you're grinding it's it just feels really good from what i've played of jet set radio it does feel like yeah like it's capturing like bomber cyberfunk is capturing what jet set radio was doing but as frank has said is bringing it into the modern space i mean frank you've played more of jet set radio so i'll let you, you talk on that more but it just feels like so much of what they're doing here is so well observed from what jet set radio was doing yeah, yeah it's stuff like as well the like the 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 draw distance like the scale yeah. of the world and the fact that you can like stream into all these different areas like they they have like little gates into some of the boroughs that are you know you know fake loading screen kind of stuff or whatever or i guess there are places you load into as well but yeah it's just the scale of the stuff and but you're doing a lot of similar stuff right frank it's a lot of like missions like you know re replicate you know try and get to this part of the map using your your uh tools or try and uh replicate like this exact course. same combination right? yeah, yeah kind of yeah yeah so yeah, what was the what there was a tony hawk game that was there it wasn't horse was it called tag i think tag where it was like you, graffiti no, there was a horse game yeah. in it where you had to do exactly what the other person did but it was called something else was it called Skate? Skate? It was, yeah was this uh, yeah, collect okay. the, yeah yeah or, no because that's collecting the s-k-a-t i oh, think yeah. maybe it was just called horse yeah I yeah remember. anyway yeah but yeah anyway something like that they've got you know but it's the line you have to sort of like um replicate right yeah a lot of the gameplay structure it's like you get to a new zone and then there's like an, a quick opening mission where you do a line they kind of show you the thing and then in order to get to the next like mission taker you have to build up your rep for that zone and you build up that rep by hit get, graffitiing enough it's like places in the level once you do that then you do a little more missions and eventually it like climaxes with a big boss fight every zone has its own boss fight which again jet set radio did too and this one seems more forgiving i feel like uh, i'm trying to remember like with this one if you die in a boss fight you just restart the boss fight in jet set radio future if you died I think you would have to like go back to your save point or like do it all over Ooh. again. But then you had to skate all the way back up and do it. And it was like, again, just games back then were just, I don't know, padded or is the word to use, but just less forgiving. <laughs> so this one is a lot streamlined, but also like just that there definitely were times where the game would be kind of vague of where do I go next? Where do I have to look at the map? Like there's no fast travel in this, which is maybe frustrating, but also good because you're actually, no, you have to skate to the next point. But because of that, you're appreciating everything. Like one thing I love about this game is it's filled with life pedestrians and like it could be like a robot mm -hmm. dog and just like w just the funky <laughs> again funky is the word to use like it's so just yeah. grew it's just cool even the crews yeah. the crews are like ridiculous <laughs> Dude, i know, love that like, all the people when they're talking especially your companions they're just dancing 
Like everything they're, they're doing, they're down, like, dude. hey, what's yeah. going on, man? Yeah. Can you believe these guys are committing murder? That's pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> dude, that, it reminded me, this game reminded me a lot of, um, have you guys seen The Warriors, the old mm -hmm. movie, The Warriors? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Also yeah. The, the, the crews and also yes. just like in The Warriors, the, the, the feel of the world is that like there are crews and they fight and they're themed and like one of them is like baseball themed. And yeah. in <laughs> in the like in the the diegesis of the world it's no one's like look at those idiots dressed up like the baseball weirdos and i feel like bomb rush cyberfunk has a similar thing where it's like there's like a, there's like the frankenstein crew and there's like the old heads and like like it, it's themed but also it's like it's normal that everyone is just like grooving all the time and shit like it just feels like it, it believes in its own vision so much and it's presenting this like this alternative version of the world that is uh, almost like a musical or something. Like in, when you're watching a musical and people like, and I can sing and they like jump into the <laughs> Dude, air. It's, and it was like, it's what's 90s that West Side Story. Guy it really yeah, is. Yeah, totally, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to quick, quick little sidebar. Jesse mentioned the Warriors PlayStation 2 game. <laughs> oh Dude, that game is so really good. Do you I know who that made that and no. where it was made? It's Rockstar, isn't it? It's Rockstar, oh, really? but it's Rockstar Canada. Ooh. Oh. It was is a Rockstar Toronto, I want to say. Probably is the one. Toronto. Is it? Yeah. All Rockstar the Canadian Toronto. listeners know what he Canadian. just did wrong. Yeah. Oh, what did I do? I want to say. It's just Toronto. It's you could you can tell who's Canadian if they don't say the second T. It's just Toronto. 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 But it is Toronto, Toronto okay, obviously. Toronto. It's just a okay. it's it's Toronto. For the, for the Canadians. Toronto. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it was Rock it was Rockstar Toronto, but I want to say that it was it was their, they made this entirely, whereas like they plug into a lot of games yeah. in Rockstar because they have their San Diego office. Nice. Obviously, Edinburgh, San Diego, the Warriors. That's so I cool. I love that game. Very bizarre. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, anything else to say about I, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk? It is kind of what it is yeah. and it does it like brilliantly. I will <laughs> say like the production value impressed me because I feel like there's been a lot of times where like games will try to come out to recapture the essence of Jet Set Radio and just something doesn't click gameplay or maybe it's just like, half baked or just they just have the budget to fully do it. but this one like there's like eight to ten full ass zones and every zone is so much verticality like every zone i feel like takes at least like maybe an hour to two hours to be and again there was times where i was kind of frustrated i put it down i came back to it later i love that um the game lets you play it how you want to so you do have the option to skateboard roller skate or bmx and because this was kind of the year i fell in love with bike riding i always did bicycling and even right. it was just impressive just looking at the the animation. I forget the term for it, but there's a thing when you're riding your bicycle where you kind of stand up on the the pedals as you ride, and the characters are always doing that. And then like I would like watch them how they bicycled, and I would imagine myself biking. I would listen to the soundtrack as I was riding my bicycle. So it was one of those games, kind of like the Tetris effect, it's where great where you're playing. Yeah. I was like playing it in my head when I wasn't playing it, or I was always thinking about it. So the experience of the game deepened it within me because I was thinking of it as I was riding my bicycle. The soundtrack. Dude. There's one song that's like, watch your back. Yo, you better watch your back. Watch your <laughs> yeah. back. Yo, you better watch your back. Yo, they they had Hideki Naganuma, the, the original guy, this band called like, what was it like Cyber Computer Milk or whatever? Like, I, I, the, there's no official compilation, but on if you look on Apple, I'm sure Spotify, you can find people have made yeah, a compilation of the music of the and such a good soundtrack, like infinitely. So that Dude. is also something that's hard to replicate because JSFR, you know, the original Jets of Radio Future, best soundtrack of all time, and they match the quality. So it's yeah. funny about the soundtrack. I'm really into, or I was really into, st still am, uh, this artist called Too Mellow. Yeah, yeah. And like, I love his, like the music's so good. Uh, and I had no idea. I had never played Jet Set Radio before this year. Um, but when I heard the songs, it would be like, welcome to, to you know, a place from Jet Set Radio. Like he samples a lot of sound oh, effects funny. and, and okay. uh, voice lines from Jet Set Radio. So when I went and played that first game, I was like, oh, this announcer guy, I've heard this voice before. Where do I know it from? Too Mellow's music. So I go to play Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Who's on it? Too Mellow. Too I was like, yeah, of yeah. course he is. That's so perfect. Like they captured it great. And Team Reptile, their previous games, were they were doing the first half of what you need to do, I think, to pull off uh, what Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is doing. Because their first two games were um, Lethal League and Lethal League Blaze. Oh, yeah. And those two yeah. games have, first off, amazing soundtracks, but also really stylized, well-animated, beautiful characters with the same sort of vibrant art style that you would expect from Jet Set Radio and now Bomber Cyberpunk. Um, and they just, they, I feel like they've been leading up to making this game for the last decade. And mm. for them to finally pull it off and have done such an amazing job is just, I, I can't commend that more. They did, a, they did so well here and they've clearly earned it, so... Yeah, what you guys are sort of like getting towards is what I think is the fact that this is the, this is a forty dollar game. This yeah. is not you, yeah. when you're when you're picking this game up, you're not picking up like I, there's been a couple of indie attempts at doing 
the sort of Tony Hawk, you know, like uh, fun games like that Ollie Toad, right? Uh, was it Ollie Pro Ollie Toad Frog? Skater? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ollie, Ollie Frog, Ollie Frog, Frog Toad Skater, yeah. Skater, yeah. Stuff like that, right? Which are a little bit more on the sort of like smaller scale indie flavor. This game feels like that double A game yes. where it's like, it's not like a full blown triple A. You kind of, I don't think you could even make one of these games and charge $60 for it in, in the year of our Lord 2023. It's such an esoteric thing. But this is not like it's long. It has lots of zones. It has lots of boss fights. To your point, it has it has the production value. It does not feel like a cheap game. It has like resolution to it. Like, like I bet if you went back and looked at a Dreamcast game after playing ten minutes of this, those games would look like complete trash <laughs> because like the, the the amount of detail in the distance that's going on in this game is kind of as you remember Dreamcast games, but is so much more. It looks so much more vibrant and detailed. Um. So yeah, it's it, it it justifies the price, which I think yeah. is cool. And also, it's not like an indie. I th- I was expecting more of an indie diversion, and I was fine with that. But it was actually more. It was closer to um. What was the other one that almost made it in? Hi-Fi, yeah, Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah. It yes, felt closer yeah. to something like that. Like it's not quite there because that's like production wise pretty crazy that's up there with like ratchet and clank and stuff but but yeah it's it's closer to that than an indie game for sure uh, i wanted to talk about the music for one more second as well i um sure. the at the beginning of when i tried hi-fi rush i mentioned in one of the previous podcasts that it uh obviously a very different flavor and this is super subjective this is probably just about mm-hmm. my taste in music but it starts with a black key song and i immediately mm-hmm. felt like i was in a starbucks waiting for my coffee <laughs> order to be ready um <laughs> This game starts and it drops this like insane track with this 808 bass and it's just like, and it starts so hard and it feels to me like this is, you know, this isn't like a music game. Like Hi-Fi Rush is a more of a music game, but I feel like this is kind of a music game. It's about like flow. It's about dancing. It's about like, like it all feels very related to the music. And um, I watched a stream of one of the voice actors for this game the day it came out. uh, And he was, he was relating his feelings that like, a game like this has to be it, like it can't just be made by people who are referencing video games. And so as much as this is like a Jet Set inspired yes. game, this game feels very in touch with like a cartoonishly inflated version of, you know, of skate culture, of graffiti culture, of music culture. Uh, and I think the the music is a real reflection of that because like, I, I don't know, I'm not like a music snob, but I'm, I'm very into music. And the fact that the music in this feels uh, both like, it it has a reverence for kind of this throwback and like record scratching, like jet set era stuff, but it also, it feels very future and very contemporary. And it just feels like this game is a, uh, I feel like if you're going to do a game that's about like skating and music and graffiti, it has to be cool. And yeah. like, bomb yeah. rush is it's like a cool game like it feel it doesn't feel like it was like a bunch of you know like 50 year old execs who were like oh and then we'll like we'll get and i'm this i'm not hating on trent Reznor. i love nine inch nails but they're like we'll get like nine inch nails in here that's what the kids are listening to and hey, like quake one is a good video game yeah. how dare you yeah <laughs> uh, um yeah no i totally with you it's, it's like music is like the most subjective of all ours perhaps yeah. um and it's the one that's the hardest one to try and explain why you like something and also probably the one that is the least interesting to hear someone else explain why they like something yeah. but i'm totally with you where there are some games that when they nail the, the or they have like you can very easily pick a soundtrack by committee or go for something that's a little bit more i don't know it's I guess it either works or it doesn't work for people. I think what you're saying in terms of hi-fi rush in this, I am completely in some sim, sim, simpatico with you on. I think like there are games that do sound, that do music where it's just like, yeah, it, it feels lame and like not interesting. And yeah. then there are games that like go hard. And if they go hard and they land it, then, and I feel like oftentimes when they people go hard, it is with intention. And so they have an idea and we talked about it with Blasphemous. That's a very like, that's they went for it they went for an angle there ain't no other games that were playing fucking spanish guitar and all this sort of stuff and it works and then when you look at games like the tony hawk series of course when you look at games like wipeout series 2097 um uh you know uh, hotline miami right like there are games where sometimes the music is just the music in the background and then there are games where the music ends up being core to the whole experience because they nailed the music and that's definitely what this game feels like it feels like one of those games where they had an idea, they knew the music, they collaborated with the right people, they were intentional about it, and the game was better, much better off. It's like a multiplier uh, yeah. on the whole kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so fair play to Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which is actually three words. I've been writing it down as one word, two words this entire time. Um, so, Bomb Rush. Let's try and think of an award for this. 
Jet Set Radio, Cell Shaded, <laughs> well, my, music, I mean, it, dancing. My baseline for it is like it is the best Dreamcast game of 2023. But like whatever that entails, like best Sega game, best Dreamcast game, best. I don't know if it's like Y2K, Shibuya Key, whatever. But like those are all the elements that tr- cross off for me. That's like absolutely all of those. But I'm putting baseline down as well. That's Ooh, good. baseline. Dreamcast. Yeah. Yeah, best Dreamcast game of 2023. What is it? Yeah, I, I, it's funny because it definitely is that. Like, it's impossible to get away from the fact that this is one of those games. Um, but it is not, like, it, it It does feel modern. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like a throwback game, like, which is also fine. But it doesn't feel like you're playing an old type game that's running on a new machine. It does feel like it's doing mechanical and technical things that those games wouldn't have or or couldn't or maybe wouldn't because the people's desires for games weren't quite there yet. Yeah. Um it doesn't feel retro to me because I don't I'm not a huge Jet Set fan. Like those games looked cool to me, but I didn't care for the gameplay. Whereas this game felt way more like, ah yes, modern things. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'll like some smooth edges and stuff. Um it's also cool. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's something that, that's like maybe a seed that we want to cool. plant is that it's like it's the coolest game of 2023. <laughs> yeah, I know sure. that's like it's so hokey, but yeah. like that is the feeling playing this game. It like it makes you feel cool. And I know that that's like such a dumb thing to say, but it is the the predominant it, emotion that I had playing this game. It would it the 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 right way of doing that award is like it has to be all lowercase just coolest game yep. of 2023. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Throw it away. I don't give a fuck. I mean, yeah. I guess it's cool or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coolest game of twenty twenty three. Throw an emoticon at the end. I, though. I guess. Yeah, cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Coolest game, I guess. Coolest game of twenty twenty three, and then like yeah, like a tongue out emoji. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Honestly, I really, really like that. I think we should just do that. Oh, coolest funny. game of twenty twenty three. You just hit it with the and then tongue out. It should be the tongue or the tongue <laughs> wink, maybe. Or or you hit it with the tongue. tongue There's out. There's like the sunglasses B thing, <laughs> like the. Yeah, yeah, that. Ooh, that that's good. I can't say, oh, that yeah. one. Oh yeah, yeah. XD or like a let's take that. Yeah, the, yeah, the parentheses. Yeah, the, yeah, the cap. What about all th- all three of them? Maybe <laughs> put a little nose. So in that's there, very so graffiti. It looks like there's someone graffitied at the end. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> or like, can we do one of those? Have you ever looked up? Um, uh, not is it ask key faces? Yeah, the like there's like the Kirby ones and like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like get the like yeah, like get one like one. Oh, that's here, good. That's good. One in. Do you want to like, throw in one, yeah. of these one of those ask key faces? Maybe like there's a shrug one. We just oh no here. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the problem is that they're all so good that it's hard. This podcast to, like, has just turned into and, us just and, and, figuring and, out how to do a like, yeah, like Lemmy faces yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like. Onomatoguchi on uh, Endless Fantasy. <laughs> I, I posted one. They 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 on on Onomatoguchi's album Endless Fantasy. There's a track that's just like capital T underscore T B, and it's like a cool guy giving a thumbs up. But yeah, it's just one of those <laughs> like. No, I like the one that Danny put. Yeah, ass yeah, that's whatever. Good. I like that. Works, but. <laughs> He mm-hmm. looks a little yeah, sad though. I think we need like a happier version of that one. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah, let me throw in a different. You can't do Lemmy face. Get that out of here. Who put I like, that no, thing? we're all graffiti. We're all tagging this Excel <laughs> sheet that people can't I see. Love but the it's Lemmy cool. one. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we do that. Look at that. Oh, that's so ones. good. That's so Which good. Which you guys do? Which one? The, the like the one that's in there now. No, this one now here. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, pretty the bottom one. Yeah, a little cheapy face with the yeah with the little B on the right. Cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That one's good. That What's the good. B? Is that like thumbs, thumbs up? up. Yeah, thumbs that's what Armand Gucci yeah. did. Yeah, the coolest game of twenty twenty. I like that because it's it's like the this game is also has sort of like a cutesiness to it, but is also cool. I feel like that's it's tapping into you know like the the Japanese aesthetic of kind of like cute characters, but also cool. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. No, I love what that. If, what if instead of coolest game of twenty twenty three, it was like cool twenty twenty three game? <laughs> I kind of like that. Does that work or does that? No, I kind of like that. Yeah. Which should we keep it or I don't know. Coolest I'm, is the superlative though, yeah. which is the my only argument in favor. Yeah, we try to not coolest. do that, I guess. Except for best yeah. AMV. Uh oh that's hmm. true, yeah. Coolest. Cool twenty twenty three game. There's <laughs> cool also something about like mixtapes. Like the word mixtape, I feel like like best mixtape, coolest mixtape twenty twenty three or something. Coolest mixtape. Coolest mixtape isn't that actually. Yeah, it does make it sound like we're only praising the music a little Soundtrack. bit. Soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Which is a problem. Best vibes, twenty twenty three. Well, what is a mixtape if not you know a collection of of vibes, a feeling? Yeah, that's true. That's so true, dude. <laughs> that's the truest thing you've you ever said. A on this fortune podcast. cookie there. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, <laughs> coolest, cool. Okay, we got some. We got some stuff to play with. Yeah, we there. got Let's some stuff to, to play with. It's coolest game of twenty twenty three, and then a bunch of just emoticons, thousand emoticons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, let's move on to uh, the best indie game of the year. <laughs> oh, you're Mint coming Rockets. in hot, eh? All right. Let's just get that shit out of the way, all first right. of all. Uh, this is Dave the Diver, which is uh, developed and published by Mint Rocket. Um, <laughs> if you look it up, but Mint Rocket is a <laughs> division of Nexon. It's not even, uh-huh. It is not even a... Uh, a a studio that is owned by them it is just part of them it's like when a it's like when a when a movie studio has an indie label it's not a different it's just a marketing tool it's just a organizational t- budget probably aspect of one of these uh things but um it is a a wholly owned division of nexon um and uh, uh let's just get that shit out of the way um i don't think it fucking matters when we're talking about the how good the game plays good i have no you know if you're if they were selling things in a weird way yep. i would probably bring that into it but i think for the focus of like how good this game is i think it's it's uh largely redundant um dave the diver is a uh 2d uh pixel art uh game that has like a 3d sort of that's in a 3d it has like a it's not parallax it's like a 3d world depth i guess is what you call it but it's split into basically two parts one is where you as dave the joyfully rotund uh, uh diver dives into the water and uses his harpoon gun and a bunch of stuff that you upgrade over time to catch fish some of those fish are near the surface some of those fish are deep some of those fish are passive some of those fish are aggressive um, and uh, you have to go down and get all these fish. And then the other part of the game, sort of like two thirds of it is the fishing. And then a third of it is uh, you running your sushi bar on the side of the island. This is all takes place in a beautiful, who knows where, like South Pacific, perhaps uh, island somewhere. Um, and you are uh, running this sushi bar. And it's kind of like a tapper style game where you were having to... Um, get people their food on time, pour their beer without fucking it up and having too much foam, making sure there's enough wasabi for the the chef. Um, And that plays out sort of like a, like a quick mini game where people come in and you basically try and get high ratings on their in-world version of Yelp or whatever the fuck it is. Um, (laughs) Cookstagram. It's a, but that's, yeah, exactly. Cookstagram. So that's the sort of broad way it works, I guess. Uh, But then the linear sort of the, the, the long form Thing what's happening is that the game has a surprising amount of story in it um the underwater gameplay goes in directions that i certainly wasn't fucking expecting um it turns into a very questy game or you're doing quests for you know if, when you're in the diving part or you're doing quests in the uh the, the diner part like oh there's a you know a critic is coming today and they really like this particular type of eel and then you got to go figure out where the eel is underwater and then go down and have the right equipment to get the eel and then there's all the mechanics underwater of like you can run out of air or you can run out of uh your your suit maybe not be pressurized to go down deep enough and then so there's all these different mechanics that are constantly engaging it you're you're trying to upgrade your your weapons with the (laughs) insane uh um uh, otaku uh, gun upgrade <laughs> guy who has his whole other thing that happens with him which comes out of nowhere there's 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 so much to it there's so much personality to it um i this is a game that i found difficult to put down when it was early access it hit 1.0 during the summertime and um they added so much to it um yeah it's just it's a very difficult game to not enjoy i found on some level um how much have you guys played of david diver I think my runtime, if I checked, is maybe like ten to fifteen hours. Uh, let me oh, cool. yeah, let me get an actual estimate. Is okay, so ten hours, and I feel like nine hours of that was on the Steam Deck, which also led to my like enjoyment yep. of it. It was like the perfect Best Steam Deck game this year. Yep, easily. Yeah, I agree. I played loads on the yeah, Steam Deck. Feels like it. Um, uh, Jesse, did you play a bit? Yeah, I, a I only played up to chapter three, uh, which was sort of like the moment where I was like, okay, I got to put this down. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> insult this game now, get it out of the way so we can just cool. be nice to it. Yeah, go for it. Um, I like Dave the Diver a lot. Jeremy mentioned this when we had the first episode of the series, and uh, I, I felt it right away, and then it reminded me of something. Dave the Diver is definitely a Skinner Boxy game. It is very much poking and prodding at the the fun neurons in your brain and, and giving you dopamine when you yes. need it. I've also this year have been playing Honkai Star Rail, my first ever gotcha game, my Ooh. only Hoyoverse game. 
This right. Dave the Diver feels like a gotcha game with none of the gambling mechanics. So it has all of the pervasive <laughs> right. brain attacking, put your credit card into this gameplay mechanics and design, and then it doesn't ask you for money. And so I had yeah. to put this game down because I'm like, I could see this like hurting me if they some someday just include some like random give us five dollars thing. I'll give them five dollars <laughs> as many times as they want. Um, so that's my insult. I will say the reason it feels that way is because Honkai Star Rail, a game I really enjoyed. That is a gotcha game that I always said. I wish this was just $60 and not a million dollars. Right. Is that it does so many new things so often, so frequently, and they are so different every time. It's not just like a new singular thing. They'll introduce a whole new swath of, of mechanics and like random things to do. They're like, hey, here's a fish farm that you can put eggs into and you can monitor the fish and the fish will like grow <laughs> yeah, and develop right. and you'll have more fish. So you forgot won't have to fish. Like, for, forgot about the fish farm. <laughs> it's a whole other, yeah, yeah. What an impressive There's inclusion so of like just a, a mechanic that makes it easier to go do the questing, <laughs> but also is a thing that you kind of want to do. You want to keep up with your fish farm. You want to check on this stuff. But then also there's like so many side quest things. There's the eco uh, tanker thing that you have on your phone that like go and find five blue shells and you'll get 10 points and this bar will go up. And that was part of the Mm. gotcha thing where it's like, they keep introducing new bars for you to fill up. And I was like, I can't escape the feeling that I'm being attacked. It's so, (laughs) it's it's so interesting that 20 years after world of Warcraft came out and basically (laughs) wow is like the ultimate, like it was the first game I think that did a lot of that because it was like a game that wanted you to come back again and again and again. And like the, the sound of the ding, when you got up, when you leveled up, right? Like the, the satisfaction of turning in a quest line and the sound that made and all like, I feel like in the West, at least that was maybe one of the first times we had that type of game. Um, but we loved it for it. Right. In the same way, like Peggle, like the entire Peggle, which is another game based on, you know, it's basically ripping off um, uh, a Japanese, uh, you know, arcade game. Yeah, the pachinko stuff, yeah. Um, Pachinko stuff, yeah. yeah. So, like, that's doing, like, (laughs) an Ode to Joy plays. So there are certain games that we, like, we kind of love them when they do it, but in 2023, I'm 100% with you. There were parts of the time where I was playing this game, and maybe this is the part at which if Nexon had come up at the start, I might have felt differently. I don't know. But there were parts I was playing this game where it did feel a little bit um, uncomfortable. Yeah. Or like, yeah, like, like there, it, it, but it's funny because like there are like, um, like directors that do that, like Tarantino or like there's some directors that do a thing where like they're constantly giving you either, or like Fincher. It's, a, it's either like spicy dialogue interesting angles beautifully sh- shot like it's just that there's an attention to detail yes. that's in it and i feel like this game has an attention to detail that feels like one of those gotcha games that's trying to get you to not turn away yeah like what you know dave's or like doing a youtube video there's nothing wrong you know, with like it. a like a mr beast video that's like f- the minute you start to get bored of something he introduced like and then we're yeah. gonna it's been six a, seconds th- cut you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that so, I I think that that is a really good comparison. Is like um because you know again Marvel movie is something I don't connect with and uh formally like in terms of the the formal just the editing of them the pacing is one of the things like aside from all the characters and the tone and all of that stuff just like as someone who does film editing the shot time on them is so quick yeah. like the and this is a this is a, a phenomenon in a lot of contemporary uh, mainstream cinema as well that just like uh shot time is really quick and it ha- you know. There, there's an argument that like, oh, are people's attention spans shorter or are are our attention spans being shorter? Have we by, been biohacked like, by the, the yeah. corporations? <laughs> no, yeah, like, like, no which, I'm not which I'm sounding facetious, but I'm no, not. I, like, I totally agree. Yeah. So I think that there is a because I, I felt the same way, Jesse, when I was playing this game. I, I played about two hours of this game. That was the minimum I wanted to play any of the games on this list. And I hit two cool. hours for this game and I was kind of like. I don't really want to play this anymore. Um, I let me again, like Jesse said, get out of the way of criticism because there are things about this game that I think are praiseworthy. Yes. Um, the I think the difference between there's a term in game development called juice, and juice is like yes. things like screen shake, things like the sound of the jingling coins <laughs> falling down when you do the thing, and you're like, oh, that's nice. Uh, I think that the the difference between like exploitative Skinner box and game juice in my brain is. A totally divorced from money because there's no microtransactions in this game is is the 
is the is the element that is like juice or Skinner boxy? Is it enhancing the gameplay experience or is it distracting me from the gameplay experience in a way? And there were many times right. where I was playing Dave the Diver where I was like, I felt like the core gameplay loop was a little like I wasn't connecting with it and it was a little light on gameplay for me. But there there were so there were like the meters are filling up and the numbers are going up and there's the quest item that I've been looking for and oh and the jingling and like there's a new type of fish. It and it felt to me like. I was so constantly being assaulted with with novelty and with the juice that it felt to me like it was trying to distract me from the fact that the core game is very, very simple, which is not a bad thing. That's So that is a very astute observation. I 100% agree, and I'd never thought about that. That the, the What is the difference between the World of Warcraft Peggle and like a gotcha game or whatever? The one thing I will say is the first two or three hours of this game is them teaching you what how deep the mechanics of the actual game are. Okay. So I think you were also maybe stuck in the tutorialization of this game where they're like okay yes it's just about diving it's just about collecting fish actually it's really not by the time you get into like the thing there's like story stuff and there's this and that and this and like and that becomes like every time you're diving down it's no longer i'm going down to get fish it's i'm going down to do these seven things yeah and i have to figure out which ones i want to do them in. so so i but i but i hear what you're saying and i think there is an element of that in in a lot of the game yeah. where like to take the fish um thing for instance like it, it, there's almost too much of that like rewarding i guess or whatever throughout it um but yeah maybe some of that was is a little bit maybe maybe who knows maybe it's 50 50 at the start of the game for you where like 50 percent of it was actually stuff that they're trying to like re- encourage you to do and then 50 percent of it was just like that type of I don't know how it splits up or whatever, but yeah, I can I can hear. It. I just wanted to caveat. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. no, I think it's an important distinction. But uh, also, like later in the game, you still like the core of the diving is still oxygen management, uh, swimming down and and shooting the fish and collecting things, right? Or or is there like a the totally op- crazy new game mechanics that I could not foresee? Cut. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> oxygen management basically is just an early game issue. Okay. Like you you don't and and depth as well to a certain yeah, right. extent. Chapter three, I think, is when it goes weird, right? Yeah, that's that's when it starts that's to the, get. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, there's a lot going on here. I, I do wish I gave it a little bit more time to see more of that world stuff, but I could feel like, okay, I think, I, like you said, I'm at the end of the kind of Skinner boxy stuff, or it feels like it anyway. Um, I'm sure right. they include more things that feed on that, but I definitely at that point was like, okay, I have to stop playing this game. I don't know. I don't know it's how a much weird it switches. Ga- yeah, because it's it's weird. It's like imagine if you started playing a game and it was Peggle, and then you realized the game like stepped back and you're actually in like an arcade and there was lots of games to play, and then you walked out of the arcade and there was this other <laughs> stuff going on. Like by the end of Dave the Diver, like six or seven hours in, you're like, what the fuck is this game? <laughs> like what is what is the in a way that's like again, it it does it feels like exciting and cool because it's like wow they put in so much into this game that they're not really talking about I, but it also feels a little bit like they're desperately trying to get you to not stop playing this game yeah. so it yeah yeah like is like, that a design like, triumph or is that a like right. let's throw so much at the play because i guess that's my criticism is that the the core of the game to me at least this is again first two hours of the game is all i played is that it's it's the diving and it's the restaurant mini game and i guess my criticism would be if you're just adding more simple mini games as the game goes on then is this not just the home page of pop cap games circa like 2001 <laughs> that's not we have bad, to start being yeah. nice to this game or we're gonna end up taking okay, it no it's okay right? so can i say the, something the, nice before <laughs> i've because uh, i before can I, come can, I, can I yeah can I round off yes. on just what you said there I think what's what is a funny sort of um uh dichotomy or like comparison to make is uh Mosalina mm. and this game where Mosalina has such a great core idea that it never has to do anything else with yeah. it it's like the first level you play that's it and it's it's so repeatable and good and has so much depth to it that like fine this game is full of like thousands of much more shallower experiences. No pun intended. Um, yeah. But 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 there's something about the amount of them that it does, how well it does them, and also I genuinely think the like characterizations of the people in this game are really well done, like and funny, yeah. like the chef and Dave and the guy on the boat and the sh- and the thing and the, the arms dealer, <laughs> otaku guy, like. I, I I was so into all of those weird people that you have to f- constantly phone call. And it and it also felt like 
like when you're running a business and you have all this shit you have to do, like, oh, I have to live my normal job of diving and my normal job of, you know, doing the 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 chef thing. But also I need to make sure that I that like like something broke and I need to fix it. And I need to make sure the pirates are cool with me. And I need to make sure that this this fucking whale finds its mother again. It just it it, it becomes like, yeah, it's like the whole thing felt like to me like a like a life simulator where you wake up in the day and you have so much shit to do you're never gonna fit it all in so you just have to like optimize for basically why you need to do that day and that week and that that's where i found it to be uh very funny but sorry i just wanted to the most alina thing i wanted to say to, to capstone to, to no make that's you like that's it more. That's perfect. I I, I want to say one more thing, and then I want to hear what Frank has to say about this game because I know he played way more than me. But that I I totally agree with you. I you're right that Mosalina is kind of the perfect like flip side of the coin. It's the it's the super villain to Dave the Diver Superman. <laughs> um, I yeah, I guess that like th- that's not necessarily like a design failure or is it a triumph they're just different types of experiences i guess um and i agree with you i think a lot of the story stuff was really strong and i found myself i was very skeptical going into this game and i found myself very charmed by the animations by the story because like you know to to contradict myself a little bit there even if the mechanics are very simple there are games like silent hill one that are so mechanically simple we're like i'm not playing them because i love the combat i'm playing them because i want to have the atmosphere the experience the characters the story and i want to see where it goes and where it takes me so like mechanical simplicity uh is is not necessarily a, a bad thing and i really did genuinely think that like the story of the atmosphere the mix of pixel art and 3d was delightful like they did so many interesting things with it uh and i think that part of the reason they can do that is because they have the nexon money coming in and they have the bandwidth and resources 100 generate yeah. like a ton of cutscenes, a ton of models a ton of pixel art a ton of characters writing etc yeah, you're you're totally right. I there was part of me as well that felt, oh, I wonder if this is like cynical. Like we have this very cute round boy as the protagonist, and like it's all very sunshiny, and you know, it's all like what a cute thing. You're like running a sushi restaurant and all this, and then I found out that it's based on like a real guy, like oh. one of the what. So one of the or one of our uh, one of the people on the team. Uh, went to like some island resort and there was a guy who ran a sushi place who went out and caught all his fish that morning and wow. then sold it and they were like and that's what the, <laughs> the like hook of the game was and based his name was on. Dave was like, well, the Diver I don't, I don't that's why. <laughs> and he's suing exactly. them now <laughs> he is yeah that's that's fair uh, uh, to Jeremy's point Frank you played a lot of this game what, what, did, what did you make of it this game is like a Yakuza game where uh, there's <laughs> yeah, so many is. elements and mini games in it and what I love about Yakuza game is honestly not the story it, it is the just there's it's it's like again I talk about Sega with Bomb Rush uh, Danny mentioned it what if this was a Peggle game and then you're in an arcade and you leave the arcade that's exactly what Yakuza games are like Yakuza a single Yakuza game has like 10 games within there's an incredible beat up there is like just a city sim like a dating sim relationship simulator there's a jrpg where you're doing quests and delivering things there's there's collectathons there's racing games or they're literally go-kart or drone yeah, racing literal or, games l1 yeah, are, two are like uh yeah and then there's arcade there's a whole arcade games there's uh, the 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 sushi restaurant stuff is exactly like managing the cabaret clubs where you have all your different girls. Your weight you have to you have to uh, level up. You have to get them to serve drinks and pour drinks. You're, there's also a food element. You're eating food. You're sampling food. And like every Yakuza game, it's just a new one. This is like a micro portable on the go version of like a Yakuza game. That kind of same experience. Um, I like the pixel art. I like the music. As soon as you submerge that like little track that plays every time when you're on the boat, the little Hawaiian tune, like yeah. it's very relaxing. It's very good. Yeah. The, the dopamine when you upgrade your fish or when you, when you upgrade things and you get your higher oxygen tank, when you're, when you're collecting fish, when you're battling sharks, when you're leveling it, when you're just shooting fish with a gun underwater, that's very r- ridiculous. Like a Yakuza game. And, um, there's also an element of like it has kind of like the monster hunter progression where you like fuse, you level up your weapons, you, you're collecting bones, you're turning a mini quest, you're hunting bigger monsters, bigger fish. And um, like monster hunter, every time, every now and then you're gated by like a kind of a tougher story mission that you can do or you can grind side quests for like the game started losing me where it was like, oh, I have to go all the way down to the bottoms again. And uh, uh, just, yeah, just, I, yeah. I want to make sure we're sure. not, we're not going to, so, so too much. Yeah. Into the, I, the depth plus the thing you're complaining about, I think right after you do what you're talking about, you don't have to do that anymore. Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, I think maybe if you didn't get the chapter three, you might've missed out on the most Yakuza part yeah, of this seriously. game that yeah. happens after that. Um, 
but yeah, yeah, that's a well, that's a well made point. Yeah, sorry, I, I cut. Yeah, you off no, there, no. Um, um, yeah. So okay, that's good to know that that it's like that's my minor point where it was like I got, I got kind of stuck in this quest line. It's like I kind of liked when I was higher up and just catching fish and leveling. I could just do that, and it's like Vampire Survivors. Like you could try to do the thirty minute challenge with this character, and it's like you know what? I just like throwing bones for ten minutes and turning the steam deck off. I don't care. So like. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Sometimes that's all I need is, is uh, I, I like it. It's very cute. It's very cool. Yeah, I, I guess it's my Steam Deck game of the year. And, and, you know, we'll say that for the award category stuff. But yeah, it's good. And it's funny to see, like, there is, like, the, the suspicion or ire, the whole nonsense with the whole it being nominated for an indie game. That's worth a conversation. But if you're just looking at the game itself, it's cool. I liked it. I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh yeah, for for the record, this should never be nominated for an indie game. That is the idea <laughs> that silly. indie game is some sort of like like un, undefined aesthetic thing is just like fucking some pudding brained nonsense. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck I don't know. Sorry, if, uh, apologies if any of you think that it should be an indie game, but I don't know, like Yeah, you're pudding to, for a brain I, now if you think that. <laughs> <laughs> it just what it does is it reduces what an indie game can yep, be yeah, like yep. if that's what we're doing then like i feel bad for all the other games that are trying to be like a like bomb rush cyberpunk are we going to call that an indie game i guess so because it's developed by an indie studio but, but it also shows that like that indie, games indie games still cost 40 dollars yeah. right so it's like so but i'm on the opinion that like we should allow indie games to occupy that space because fucking god knows that like none of the big corporations are making these types of games except Dave the Diver <laughs> so who knows maybe we're just maybe maybe I get if there's anything to take from the game of the year uh no clip podcast it's that the definitions are stupid and that's why we make up the awards after the fact yeah, yeah. because uh you know they're just so silly. there needs they to be like a uh do you guys know dog me 95 the film movement and they have like oh, yeah. there's the there's like the list of things that make a dog me movie where it's like no, no. artificial lighting no this no that there needs someone needs oh, someone needs to make like a dog me 95 list of qualifications for indie games oh. indie games <laughs> independently funded uh not made no publisher no? Uh, there probably must be so some tough. cap on team size that is tough yeah I don't yeah. Know. yeah smaller than five people yeah <laughs> <laughs> fucking made, no game no made game, by yeah. one guy in a basement mm -hmm. sweatpants it has were to release on itch.io has to be a guy no, he has yeah, to wear glasses a guy, a guy is non-gendered non I'm from Boston be, guy is okay. everyone yeah. <laughs> has to be a white guy from ah, uh, from Silicon from Valley from Ohio um, to be, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there you go Dave the Diver we mostly I, like I think it, we said since. a nice thing Somewhere we in did. There. It's a, it is funny though, isn't it? I because I I really like this game, and I also felt like I was being manipulated in some way. Sometimes it's, it's really manipulated. Manipulated. It just is. It, it's a beautiful yeah. game. That I like the variety of the mechanics. I think like Jeremy, you're right that it is kind of just like a Newgrounds page with everything possible and instantly <laughs> loads. But it does kind of also still feel rewarding when you get those things. It's like when you're playing Super yeah. Mario RPG or or for me Paper Mario. And like you run into an enemy for the first time and it has a new way of attacking and you have to like yeah. do the little mini game. This has the same kind of thing, like a different way of catching the fish, different thing that you do in yeah. the world. So it, it it's doing a lot of stuff that my favorite games do. But because, again, I played the gotcha games this year and I feel that that like worm in the back of my head that's like spend five dollars yeah. and get a pull like, i'm like i no. gotta and you're like where is it you're like suspicious of like because it goes to jeremy's point of like the fa the reason they were probably able to do this you know have so many different mechanics and how we're just not used to an indie looking game having all of this juice yeah. having all of this animation these different mechanics like they just can't afford to do this shit so the only reason they were able to is because of nexon so the whole thing at least that's what it looks like to to me is that like that's the that's why i feel suspicious playing it yeah. because i'm like how the fuck did they put this much game into what looks like this like small little indie game um and i think uh that's why it's like it can't be an indie game then because basically what you're doing is you're 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 just pumping a marathon runner full of steroids and having them run with all the people yeah. who've had to train normally you know what i mean like it's not it's not fair you know that way um anyway we should probably give some games awards we're we're zero for four here on the awards for Homebody, Blasphemous 2, Bomb Rush, Cyberfunk, and Dave the Diver. Let's start with Dave because we just finished it. Um, maybe we'll get a blast of uh, of inspiration here. Uh, Yakuza came up, Indie, LOL, 
uh, most most indie most, <laughs> would be fun most games, games, but it's in the one most game. <laughs> I I this is a I, this is a bit of a taking the piss name, but I I like <laughs> best browser game of 2023, but it feels too derogatory. <laughs> like I, it's too tongue in cheek. I think it's really funny, but I get what you're saying. Thank you. Well, I mean, like most ethical gotcha game for, for me, it was my for, for me, it was my Steam Deck game of the year. But calling it best mobile game, <laughs> it's true. I played it on the go, it I, but it's all it also has elements of mobile games that people deride it for. But if you try it, it's a goddamn good mobile game. So I think the only issue I would have with the Steam thing, the Steam Deck thing is that so, like we're lucky enough to have Steam Decks. A lot yeah. of people don't play on Steam. Yeah. So it's it's you know, it's I always find that it's a, it's a bit of a subset. Sure, sure. Um, it's like although a best mobile. It's like a fun. browser game with. It's like the Disneyland of browser games, or you know what I mean. Like it's like what happens when you throw a ten million dollars at a browser game, or something. I don't know. Most well funded indie game. Yeah. No, because I the problem. I also don't want to like be too derogatory yeah. about it because yeah. it is like, it is like a fun. No, it deserves praise. It's there are a lot of good things it does. Most ethical gotcha game. I feel like it's a bit too wordy though. Um. Hidden. Most game is very funny. Yeah, hidden There's something a lot to think about that is uh, something about hidden depths too is a uh, double uh, entendre. Hidden depth. water. Oh, funny. there we go. Hidden depth. Yeah, the hidden depth award. Yeah. Oh, the hidden depth award is not bad. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Literally, I will say also <laughs> what happens in chapter three onwards feels very tied into that too. There's, there's like. Because the game kind of presents itself once you get Did the first thing they say when it. you start chapter three without giving it away, just this is too Danny and anyone who's played it. I was like, are you joking? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what like, we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it turned its face. It, like, yeah. Hidden depth is very good. That might be it. It's not bad. What do we think? I like it. it it's it's a not, pun. It works. It, it's a pun and it works. We'll put it there for now. Hidden depth award. Depth. Depth charge. It's not depth, a pun. It's no just charge. good wordplay. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's You're welcome. Hidden I know, Jeremy. I know you were sitting there. It like, really works though, as well. <laughs> it really works though, because it is like a game that just keeps presenting itself. Yeah, like there is more and more and more. Um, okay, all right. Let's uh, let's go back to Homebody. Let's get put our put our therapy hats on here for a second. So, Homebody, puzzle game, <laughs> mental health. They have certificate of authenticity, cult classic, Lynchian haunted house, mind prison, puzzle of the mind. I like the idea. Mind. I wrote down. Uh, this is not a, a good title, but it maybe like sparks something better in someone else. That it's a okay. uh, scarily sincere. It's something about like oh, yeah, something about that. Mm-hmm. The other thing I wrote down is um that like so I don't know how to put this into a pithy title, but like something about like 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 uh like my like my mind is a haunted house, or that like my like mental health is the real survival horror, or something that like connect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that, but clever. That but you guys clever. are getting some weird weird uh, fortune cookies. Yeah, getting spread. Yeah, around. sorry. No, you're right. I feel like there's something there. Yeah. I feel like there's an idiom that is about mind, pal- mind, pal- mind, your brain, your psyche. Being scared on houses. Yeah. I feel mind, like there's some. What about like mind over manner instead of mind over matter? Something like that. It's not, mind I over like manner funny. is funny because it's manner house, <laughs> yeah, haunted house, and What'd you your say, manner Jesse? of being. No, I just said it was uh, funny. <laughs> oh, I thought you made a joke. Sorry. Oh no. <laughs> What'd you say? Hmm. It was great. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't hear manner. you. Were you praising? Yeah, did you say it was really cool. <laughs> hey, what'd you say about Final Fantasy 16, Jeremy? Did you say something, about uh, something about a bowl uh, of glass. <laughs> oh, oh, a bowl of uh, ass that you like. That's yeah, really yeah. nice, man. Bowl of ass. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Can True. We give that bowl award to Homebody. <laughs> the bowl of ass. The bowl of ass. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Jory and the team would think that was funny, but I can't do them like that. <laughs> we can't. Yeah, we can't disappoint someone like the Signalis people last yeah. year. We need oh to, man, I know. Yeah, we need to go. We need to pick the good one. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm also now looking f- through men- mental health. Well, there's the Beastie yeah, Boys. Like- ter- I mean, l- you know, time to get ill or whatever. But like ill in the sense that it's <laughs> get cool. Mentally ill. <laughs> you know, it- the illest time game. to get mentally ill. Oh, award. Illest Let's game go. of 2023. <laughs> illest funny. game. Break fire funny. today, man. <laughs> Every time, every time that could work it. for uh, uh, bomber bomber as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're also they could, yeah. they could share that award. No, I really <laughs> yeah. like the one we have game. for bomb rush because it looks yeah, like Frank is the one doing the thumbs up at the end. Yeah. That looks like like a little Frank Howley yeah. doing the. I love that. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, what do you do for this? 
I mean, ah, we're doing the wordplay thing again, where we get so hung up on how do we make a funny award. I know. Award, it doesn't have just to give be it a like good award. too cheeky. It can just be yeah. a nice award, but it, I don't know. It feels satisfying when we come up with one. It really does. It feels it's so like, much better. It's the Dave the Diver coin jingle of, of, of this exactly. whole process. I need someone yeah. to just do this with their keys in front of me while I yeah. say something that's <laughs> not that good. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry, Mitt Rocket. No, it's all right. If we were to give it a sincere award, what would it be? Yeah. Because that, that's also hard because it's like, it defies genre, this thing. It's very. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, I don't it, know. It's so. It, it's like scary to be sincere. There's maybe something there. Like, I think that there, this game takes a risk by being so sincere. Um, And I think that that's kind of. Not, not only the game itself, but also like the characters within the game that like in order to have an authentic if 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 you struggle with mental illness or mental health issues, that there is a there is a real struggle to connect with other people uh, on a deep level because you either have to mask those things about yourself and that creates an inauthenticity to you or you need to be like so real with people that you risk scaring them off. Um, mm. So I don't know. There's something about like how sincerity is is scary or it's scary to be sincere. So the only reason I don't like that is because I think to me, the joy of the, I, what I got at most of the game, I enjoyed the mental health stuff and it definitely resonated with me, but I just thought the mechanics of the house and the puzzles were the thing that kept me coming back. So That's fair. I don't want to reduce them. No, you're right. You're right. It is like a, it is a great, just like survival horror game on its own merits. Totally separate from that. Um, how about the therapy is the friends we made along the way award? How about that? <laughs> I think that considering where this story ends up, I'm not sure if friends we made along the way is the uh, friends friends we lost along friend, the way. Friendships friends that we, we mended along the way. <laughs> Tried to. It's like the, the Jungian the shadow award. Um, hmm. <laughs> Diagnosis. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> This is why. What do they give you? Uh, prescription. Should... Can you? Can we prescribe something? Can we put a prescription joke in there? This is mm. the clozapine yeah. of. Video I'm also games. trying to think. Of, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like puns between obsessive compulsive disorder Can't and haunted houses. Mm. Like agoraphobia and haunted houses. Yeah, agoraphobia is good too because not only is the game about agoraphobia, but you're always in this one haunted house the whole game, basically. Yes. Phasmophobia was that game, right? <laughs> <laughs> agoraphobia agora ag no uh, now i've now just said the thing descended into the, <laughs> the fucking black hole of the stupidity of trying to come up with these yeah uh, i'm just looking up therapy germs <laughs> yeah me too it's really it's really it's really bumming me out <laughs> <laughs> oh, man yeah just like I've uh, it's also about like connecting with other people. I was th I was going to say you're not alone in the dark, but that's too stupid. And also it doesn't really connect to the themes of this game. Oh, yeah, <sighs> that's really good, though. Thank you. It's not kind of like that. It's not quite hitting the mark for me, but but it does kind of go into the mental health stuff of like it's a positive message for the award. And it, yeah. is, it the conclusion is kind of positive or tries to be right. I mean, of this game yeah. anyway, for sure. You're not a alone. puzzle of the mind. Yeah. Or like untangled, like labyrinth of the mind. Oh, I already written that down. God. <laughs> Literally just saying shit. I said just giving me mental illness to come up with this title. <laughs> All right. Let's come back to this one. I feel like that's going to be the hardest of the bunch. Probably. Yeah. Um, how do we feel about bomb rush cyber funks one? I'm worried that in the cold light of like tomorrow, I'll think it's lame. I feel you. <sighs> the coolest game of 2023. We had one of these last year, which felt like it didn't work. And was it the one we changed? Last year we had, let me just go over here. What Grand do you mean? They're all bangers. Just, um, <laughs> God of Speed. That, might that was stupid. <laughs> Tapest Tapestry of Humanity. That was good. Oh, I love that one. That was a great one. <laughs> Best Road Trip. Gave me the Homies Award. We gave that to Call of Duty. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible con grandest adventure. I think we're already better than last oh, year. Yeah. Let me just say that. I think the names are better this year already. Coolest illest game of 2023. Coolest. H how do you feel about it? I guess first of all, it feels fine to me, but I I worry that I like it. This might be another one we. It looks and feels patrons. like an early 2000s message board review of this game. That's what that would look like, and that fits in with the aesthetic of the game. And I, 
I just like the little thumbs up. Yeah, but that's a lame review. That's, that's the. Pro- it's, yeah. I'm with you. That's chill. But it feels. It's. What about like um because it has so many elements that are all kind of firing on uh, their own individual high level like the music the gameplay the aesthetics all these things it's like best combo or something something about combo because uh, yeah. like it's about trick combos I don't know yeah yeah that's not bad actually sickest combo something there Frank, how do you feel about it? I mean, my gut still lands on best Dreamcast game. Like, I can't change the wordplay of it, but it's like, that's what that game means to me. It is like bringing back that early Y2K, yeah. the Sega, the Sega aesthetic. Like, it is mm. a legit dream, like, sequel. It's a Dreamcast sequel to a game we never got. Like, and it's like, so. Well, like Dreamcast that. come true, like a dr- dream come true, Ooh. but Dreamcast or something. Something like that. It's a it's not. It doesn't quite it, it fit works, the game but specifically. I know it is lame. Cool. I know, but it's a fun you gotta say lane. it so that someone else can refine it. You know, it's a fun lane. Uh, yeah, exactly. No bad. No bad ideas in brainstorming. You're right. That's Dreamcast come true. I will say best Dreamcast game works. I like that. It could be best. I wouldn't say of 2023 because it's just implied. Yeah, you just say best Dreamcast game and then have the little BB face there. The last key face. Is there like a, an idiom about like like dreams don't die or something like that? Because like dream, it's like it's like keeping the dream alive, keeping the dream cast the alive. Dream alive. I don't know. <laughs> I'm desperate. Keeping the Scraping the barrel it's, here. It's, it's good stuff. It's like every year we do this. It's just us naming our boat. <laughs> like trying to come up with the super <laughs> cool boat. That goes and then you have fast. to live with it. Totals. And then two years later, you're yeah. drinking a margarita. And you're like, why the fuck did we call it this, dude? <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Can we do like can we get a music thing in there? Like the beating heart of the Dreamcast award? That's too long. Too many words. Mm. Beat, yeah, beat, baseline. Dream, I don't know. Best Dreamcast game feels. I will say I'm starting. I think that's it's pretty good. It's pretty. I mean, it is definitely accurate. a Dreamcast game. Yeah, almost literally. Mm. All right, let's put the two of them there together. We'll say. Yeah, because like that that's still um, have been has been my shorthand all year of describing it. Like it's the best Dreamcast game. Like that, like I just that, really not like even have to get cute about it. Yeah. yeah. Of the coolest game of 2023 with the thumbs up. Put that in there, make it all lowercase. Uh, we could we could just like best dreamcast. We could do best dreamcast game in all lowercase, and then one of these ask you. We 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 like this one. Is that I personally? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Best dreamcast game. I that's like it. Cute. I'll leave that there for the moment. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. B. Oh Jesus, forgetting how to use Excel now. Um, Google Sheets. Uh, okay, Blasphemous Two. Oh yeah. There, if we can, what what rhymes with night? If we can do that, if we can ah, find a shite word. Uh, <laughs> Symphony of the Shites. <laughs> Symphony of the Shite. Oh, wow. oh, I like that. Symphony wow. of the Shite. <laughs> If there's something that rhymes with night that sounds Catholic, then we're good. Yeah. That's it. We just need like something like that's got to do with prayer or I'm looking through it now. Plight. No, that doesn't really work. Blight. That's more of a potato famine thing. <laughs> um, smite. Oh. Yeah. Symphony of the Light is not bad, but it doesn't really capture the game because it's so dark. <laughs> Dude, Sacrament of the Plight. There you go. Uh, uh, transubstantiation of the can we do that <laughs> we there that we go there. <laughs> that's something he's cooking <laughs> he googled <laughs> look man it turns into his body once it enters your mouth okay mm, okay like he's fucking coward, cowardly protestants who think it's symbolic don't believe in magic Lol. what the hell <laughs> let's see if something if I can find anything that rhymes with symphony that's probably much less of a chance I feel like night was the Yeah, does does rhymezone.com have a uh, Catholic <laughs> theme filter? Epiphany. Epiphany of the night is not bad, actually. It's not Polyphony quite there. Is here. It's a shame this wasn't a driving game. Polyphony of the night could have Yeah, worked. or a music game. We've got a really good name <clears> for uh, for stunt racer now. What are we calling it? What's the game? What's the game we're making? Stunt, stunt derby. derby? Stunt, there you go. <laughs> stunt, stunt racer. racer. Stunt racer. Sorry. Stunt racer. <laughs> Cunning stunts? Is that what we're calling it? No. Cunning stunts. Oh, yeah. Remember that? What yeah. was that? That was, that was a PC was racer, a... right? Yeah. Yeah. Cunning stunt. Yeah. Let's see what they did there. That does sound like an award we'd give. Yeah, it does. Cunning stunts. 
Got to be prayer. careful. Every time you say that, you got to like make sure the gears are grinding so you don't say the other one. <laughs> is there any, yeah, exactly. A, a, ania. Is there anything? Ania. That sounds. I think if you search Catholic Ania, you're on a list. Cath- Catholic mania? No, Catholic mania. <laughs> Catholic mania. <laughs> That just <laughs> sounds like a that sounds like a period of like <laughs> cultural turmoil. Catholic. Oh, the eras of Catholic mania. Oh, it yeah. was bad. Catholic mania. Oh man, I'm looking for rhymes with Metroid because something. That's something what I was mania. just about to do. Yeah. As well. That's so sad. No, no, but it's like it, it would be perfect if it was like Goyavania, but it rhymed with Metroid. Why couldn't his name have been of the- Metroid? <laughs> I'm on, I'm on, I'm on <laughs> Metroid. I'm on glossary of the Catholic Church right now. So oh, zero yeah. copies at Metroid. That's never Metroid. Va- I'm yeah. never buying that game. Francisco Metroid. No way. <laughs> <laughs> is, or is there Goya? Is there any Goya? Is there any game genre that's got like Goya? <laughs> Sounds like Gotcha. <laughs> Goyavania, Metroid. Yeah. The game would have been better with um, waifus that were five stars for sure. Yeah. True. Baptism of Oh man. Giant Sequoia of Adia. Now I'm just looking at rhymes of the Goya. <laughs> <laughs> Giant Sequoia. Giant Sequoia. Is Sequoia. Getting worse. Wow. That could be fun though. Someone should make that game. That's something, right, guys? Yeah. It's like Fern Gully if it was a video game. Yeah. Can we do that? Oh my god. Avatar of the game. <laughs> Have you played that by <laughs> the way, true. Frank? No, I'm, I'm waiting for uh, not yet, not yet. Free time. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe Santa. On our, maybe Santa will maybe Santa. It's good. You'll like it. Maybe Santa. That's a, maybe it'll be on our list next next year. Maybe we'll have a we'll have a late comer. There's a lot of December games actually. A lot of games that came yeah. out this month. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I'm not used to seeing all this stuff. It used to not be the way. Um, just war doctrine, man. That's a really interesting thing to have here in the Catholic Church glossary. Fornication of the night. What have we got there? Is there... Oh my god. Hmm. Me- Metropolitan Archbishop turned up. Metroid Metro- <laughs> Metroid Archbishop. I don't don't think that I don't think that works. Um, nuns, nuns, nuns on the run. I don't know, man. This is this is this is too. It's hard. The puns go hard. hard. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Also, we can bounce around too. You know, we got a couple. That was the thing we did wrong. Not wrong last time, but the tough thing was we nailed three, and then we just had to sit with one at the end. Yeah. We still haven't got yeah, we we should we go back to typecast. Yeah. Oh, arcade yeah. love letter is not arcade love letter is not bad. Yeah. It's just it's a little bit hammy. It's a little too. Yeah, it's hard to it's love letter. It's hard until it clicks that like letter letter is the thing. It's hard to make that uh to communicate that letter has a double meaning. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Love letter itself is such a such a I don't know, um understood term. You don't break it up immediately in your right. brain, you know. Letter, 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 letter. Yeah, the word has lost all meaning in my head. <laughs> Open letter. This is what happened last year too. Letter. Is that towards the end of each, like when we have to nail down titles on the hard ones, it just gets psychotic. <laughs> yeah, it just fucking words just turn into soup in yeah. your brain and pour out your ears. Yeah. Lowercase letter. Something about like alpha, bet, alpha, beta. I played this game when alpha, it was in bet, beta. Soup. Alpha beta soup. Alpha beta soup. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone through the looking glass. Oh, I still think Keyboard soup. Warrior is funny, but it's not quite there. It's good though. Yeah, I'm starting to like it more and more. Yeah. The, more this fucking longer. This yeah, I know. <laughs> Keyboard Warrior. Keyboard Warrior. BPM words per minute. Yeah. Man. So, okay, I'm just going to open it up to anyone right now. Just think about Typecast, think about Homebody, think about Blasphemous too. Just go into your own little little pocket here, and hopefully the listeners will just, maybe or maybe we leave all of these. Until we just next. bring it up in January. Oh yeah. God, what did people tell us to give the whole, awards for? Well, the, the problem is the next one we're recording is in like three days, so we're not going to have the, uh, the, the time yeah. to peruse the comments before we get these up. Man, so tough. Do you want to do that? Do you want to rest on these? I think we're I think we're out of juice here. Do you want to do you want to rest on these and we'll we'll come back and we'll we'll do them all 
on Monday. We've only got three games to talk about Monday, so we do have more time. That's true. Right? Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Yeah, I think we, I think we're, okay. we're hitting a wall here. Yeah. All right. Is there something there? Wall. <laughs> wall. <It's> like, <laughs> well, like rhymes with wall. Pink Floyd's the wall. Um, wall ball. All right. <laughs> Another brick in the wall. Brick rhymes with dick. I don't know. <laughs> Too much. Another dick in the um, wall for the Catholic game. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap it up there, folks. Uh, this is the third of four. We have one more game of the year podcast uh, today. We gave awards Some. to one game, two games, and two games we didn't. Um, we talked about Homebody, which we need to give a name to, an award to. Blasphemous 2, which we also really enjoyed. We need to give an award to. Uh, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk has won Best Dreamcast Game, all lowercase, with a little smiley face uh, at the end of it. Uh, Dave the Diver has won the Hidden Depth Award, which, yeah, I like that one. Um, Slayers X has the Zane Lofton Lifetime Achievement Award still. Final Fantasy 16 <laughs> coming home with Best AMV. Resident Evil 4 Remake with Master of Re... Capital RE making uh, Typecast currently in a keyboard warrior. We'll leave that there for the moment. Um, that's it. We'll be back uh, next week to you. Or maybe we'll get these out on Tuesday and Friday, Jesse, or something. Maybe we'll rush them ahead. Or I don't know. What are you, what are you what trying are you... to make me do? You want me to work over the weekend? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's a good point. That would, that would mean working over the weekend. No, don't I'll, I'll build double time. Um, fine. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> maybe Wednesday okay, then. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> um, uh, let's see I don't know I feel bad waiting people to wait until after Christmas until we get the final <laughs> one out um, but uh, we'll see anyway uh, we'll be back next week though uh, whenever that is for you guys uh, next episode talking about Midnight Suns Baldur's Gate 3 and Alan Wake 2 until then thank you for checking in on us and we'll see you next time bye bye